Hey, what's up? Welcome to Movie Dumpster Season 5, Episode 7. Today we're talking about Killer Clowns from Outer Space from 1988, directed by Stephen Kyoto. I'm Joel Vascola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Rudy Real. Welcome to the dumpster. So yeah, we're back in the dumpster and we got Rudy Real with us again. How you doing, man? I am fantastic and I am so happy to be here for a few reasons I will tell you shortly. I mean, it's been a hot minute, Rudy. It's been a couple of years. We had you on that Shakes the Clown episode. We have to mention it anytime. Oh, yeah. Go watch Shakes the Clown if you haven't seen it. And then, you know, of course, watch the episode. It's good. Uh, yeah, Rudy, that was your, uh, the previous time we had you on the show. It was a ton of fun, but you're back. That was yeah. your debut. Yeah, yeah. Um, More clown shit this time. <laughs> uh, I was so happy. So I originally thought we were going to do a different movie when we got together. And when I touched base with you about what we were doing yeah. and you said Killer Clowns, I didn't mention the other movie because I was really excited <laughs> about this one. <laughs> I, what was the other movie? Uh, it was going to be Brain Donors. That's oh, right. It was going to be Brain I mean, Donors. we've had a couple yeah. kicking around for a couple yeah. of years uh, <laughs> ever since we met. Uh, there was that one you you pitched us on. It was like the, the caveman at college the, or whatever. Uh, was it the... Big man on campus. Big man yeah. on campus, or it was also known as like the hunchback, hunchback of Notre Dame. That's what, it, or the yes. hunchback of, of of Notre Dame, however you say right. it. Was it Notre, <laughs> Notre Dame? Not a fan, I suppose. But, yeah, but I, it was like a I didn't want to curse. Shit. I didn't want to mess up the monetization. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm a visual speaker. I think, I think we're past that. I, I, I already said shit. Oh. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so welcome back, Rudy. Yeah. What, what the hell's been going on? Oh, so, so much. Uh, now that COVID is starting to die down, uh, my summer schedule for entertainment on the Jersey Shore is back in full swing. And during the during this last winter, I launched a coffee company, Love is Love Coffee, where nice. we give uh, at least 10% of profits back to charities in the LGBT community. Uh, we host live events and employ members of the LGBT community or at least very strong allies as well. Um, just because everybody should love each other and have fun and go to go to live events. Yeah, fucking A. And then I had some of that coffee this morning. It was delicious. I, I smelled some of it. I'm going to have some, you know, <laughs> later tomorrow after this recording. And uh, and you know what? I think as a as a, a gift, as a thank you to the viewers, later we'll an announce a giveaway and they could they could get a bag themselves. Look at that. How's that sound? Well, something for you. Giving back to the dumpster dwellers. Wake up with Rudy in your cup. Yeah. Love in your cup. Excuse me. No, no, no. I like it the other way better. <laughs> I mean, we talking about, is there like a little Rudy in your cup, like cheering and shouting? Yeah, yeah, for, yeah. Well, that's, that's really the best or, part. Or is it up. just, you know. Forget about a, cup, you, of, a did, cup of Joe. A cup of Rudy is what you want. Well, I was going to make it gross, yeah. of course. Did you jack off in the cup? Is that the little Rudy in the sure, cup? We're all, we're not even fucking 10 minutes into this. You're talking about jerking off I mean, a cup have already. you watched this show, Joe? <laughs> You've been on it for five years with me. You should know by um, now. I can just, I can see sales either going way up or way down after this, uh, after this podcast. Or video cast? What are we calling it? Um, it's still it's still a podcast. It's still a podcast, and it's like you know, it's still the length of a podcast. We were like, "Dude, why is this video song?" It's because we're a fucking podcast, oh, but we're doing yeah. video. Ooh. Yeah. So there you go. Yeah. Close your eyes. It's a podcast. <laughs> <laughs> While you're driving, you're yeah. listening to the audio first. You just hit a tree. Oh no! <laughs> Thanks, Rudy. Real, you killed me. Wait, hold on. At first, I thought you meant they're watching this while driving. I was like, that's a bad idea. Well, <laughs> we. I mentioned it briefly, an old friend of ours, uh, of Joe specifically, uh, uh, John, uh, what was his last name? John Saltarelli. Yes. R R.I.P. Yeah. Uh, great dude. He was in uh, Field of Screams. He was in your, your short film, Outhouse. Yep. What? What? Ah! 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 <laughs> I'm sorry, John, from the grave, but we were shooting something with this man once, and he literally had... I think it was porno, to be perfectly honest, watching it on his his fucking LCD monitor in the car while driving. So there's people out there, Rudy. John, John Wait, which, which video was he watching? I don't, it was a couple of years ago. It was uh, just kind of amazing that yeah. the man could pull it off and didn't have, you know, didn't hit any speed bumps. He yeah. got to location, no problem. John would watch horror movies like in the yes. car and be like, oh, yeah, I was watching this like in the car. And I'm like, what do you what do you mean in the car? And he's like, yeah, I got my fucking DVD player on the no. on the uh, dashboard. I'm like, you fuck. He. He was a crazy dude. I he was love watching I love that clowns. guy. Yeah, kill, oh. he was a big he was a big supporter. Yeah, of, maximum of, uh, overdrive. Of our stuff. <laughs> we miss yeah. you, John. Yeah, miss you big time. Um, 
But yeah, so what else do you do besides like you just talked about your love is love coffee, but you do some other stuff, Mr. Yeah. Lucky Duck Entertainment. So I am I am the owner and and head honcho at Lucky Duck Entertainment. So I am a I wonder what it's like to be the <laughs> head honcho. Uh, I am a balloon artist, which I believe is going to play into uh, this video a little bit yes, later. Yes, he fucks balloons. Uh, that's a lunar, and <laughs> and I'm not denying it. I just want the right name out there. Uh, I'm also a stand-up comedian, so if anything I say is funny or offensive, it's part of my job. Uh, I'm a what else? Am I I'm a magician. I'm a nationally ranked mini goth professional. And uh, I'm an ordained minister. Oh, really? Yeah, I will do anything to avoid a real job is what it boils <laughs> down to. Like, I, that's not me. Nope. Oh, my goodness. I am so excited because we're going to get, when once we get into this, we, we got some balloon shit happening and I'm yes. very excited. Do you have any magic that you want to show us? Uh, actually, you a little what? A little I, magic I, show? I do have something balloon rated, balloon related balloon and magic related uh, uh, possibly let me check here okay quick. let's see what we got cooking over here sorry for everybody on the audio version but you're not going to see this magic trick so you should probably head over to youtube and subscribe and watch this again yeah youtube.com slash movie dumpster check it out if you haven't already subscribe maybe leave a like on the video yeah leave a little comment there tell us how much you love rudy and how much you want him to shove that balloon right up your ass <laughs> I, I will now be reading the comments for this. <laughs> here um, it comes. Here we go. All right. So now this is this is a a little balloon thing. This isn't going to be what we're doing later. So instead of fully inflating this, we do just a little a little puff of air. This is going to be easy oh. for everybody a little bit later. Okay. And then oh, I I got to keep watching the uh, the video so I can see that this is happening. Video right. never <laughs> lies, Rudy. And then when you when you squeeze it together and push. Uh, you can do the twist like that, and you'll actually get wow the little balloon dog out of here, which I you might not even be able to see up there on over the there. Screen. Oh yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I'm showing it to the like to the monitor. I <laughs> that's not the people. That's the people. <laughs> see, I'm used to live entertainment where people are people. I feel very <laughs> yeah. It, yeah. So that's that's the. Dog. <laughs> I, that was pretty impressive. That was cool. I like that one. Uh, that, that, that's like people that, you know, do the, the tie the cherries inside their mouth. Like you get the mini version. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That's, you should see. Never mind. I'm just, can oh, you, I keep forgetting what show I'm on. I can say, anything <laughs> I can say whatever the fuck you want. Can you pull a quarter out of my ass? Uh, well, yeah, I did put several in there last night. Yes. So. You will the roll. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> You're going to have a really rough bowel movement later, I, Joe. I love that he thinks it was a roll of quarters. <laughs> that's what I it felt like. I hate that I admitted I it was cold and It was cold and met metallic. Oh, I, I always forget when I agree to be on this show <laughs> that I do kids shows and family <laughs> entertainment. We are and then like five minutes into this, I'm like, oh, yeah, no, that's not happening again. <laughs> that's not. Um, yeah. Listen, listen to Shakes the Clown episode and you'll be surprised I have any work. We have to bust your balls. That's just oh, absolutely the, the, that we have to. Listen, I don't kink shame. Do what you want. <laughs> um, so we're talking about Killer Clowns Matter Space today. I <laughs> I'm so excited. This is one of my favorite movies. This is Me the too. first DVD that I ever bought six months before I had bought a DVD player. That's how much I love this movie. That's incredible. I remember watching this on I don't know what channel it was on, but I remember watching this on TV because it was on it a lot. Like this was like the like a midnight movie type mm -hmm. of thing for a long time. And um, my mom loved this movie, too. So she would always have it on when I was a kid. And then Killer Clowns was just like a part of growing up. It was like it was right there with like little monsters and like yeah. never ending story and shit like that. <laughs> Killer clowns of outer space. <laughs> Which is this movie's silly as shit. And that's yeah. that's like the charm, but like this is pretty gory. Well, it's also pretty scary. Not in the La Scola household, though, yeah. of course. Yeah, well. I was still a kid, uh, still yeah, little yeah. at the time, but uh, but yeah, very fond memories of watching it on television. Uh, I mean, my first viewing, and I've said this many times on the show for other films, was at your house in the uh, bedroom after high school. That was the first time you saw this? Yeah. Oh, yeah. With oh, Joe. wow. Uh, I, I, I distinctly remember it, falling in love with it and watching it. I think it might have been this copy. It I might have been. I, I don't know if I had the media one. Right, because when uh, when when we get, came down here to start filming, I was like, oh, man, I really love the uh, cover closest to you, Joe. Yeah. But but yeah, I think you're right. Awesome. This is the main one that I had seen up to now. I'm, I'm going to talk. Also say after bedroom. I uh, know after high school in his bedroom. Yeah. Rudy, <laughs> I thought I was the one making it dirty. And you just took it to a wait, different place entirely. I, I can't wait to rewatch this. After you said after bedroom, I had the most perplexed look on my face <laughs> while you were talking. I'm like. What did he say? Did if, I hear that right? If like, the bedroom, we yeah. watch clown killers. Yeah. We fuck and then watch the clowns. <laughs> we watch outer space clown movie. So 
this one I this one I remember specifically because I watched it on TV a bunch, but then uh, MGM re-released Killer Clowns and they put it on tape first, and then they released that DVD that yes. you were talking about, which was not the the blue uh, the Blu-ray. No, which that's the Blu-ray. Yeah. yeah. If you have not seen the Blu-ray, you can see nipples in this one. <laughs> uh, for oh, as pe- many the, times, the pizza yeah, chick, yeah. For as many times I've seen this movie, I've never seen nipples until oh, today. Yeah. This movie just keeps getting better. Oh, big time! I, the, Ar- the Arrow Blu-ray is fucking also gorgeous. Transfer. If you didn't pick up the Arrow mm. Blu-ray, just get it. If you're a Killer Clowns fan, I, I'm gonna have to because I could not find my DVD for the fucking life of me. Oh man, it, it got up and walked away. <laughs> you lift it off like that big top. <laughs> But this version, the, this the media, the media release. Chris Barr and I used to go. My buddy Chris Barr, that we do talks from the dark side with. You better be watching that show. It's back. It's back. We went to this guy, this train guy, and he it was on Route Thirty Five in Ocean Township, and um, it was a, it was a guy who sold like model trains and shit, and like model train parts, and like the little fucking dioramas and stuff. And I guess he knew somebody in Florida with a fucking uh, uh, video store, like a mom and pop that went out of business. Yeah. So he, I guess he was like, hey, I'll do you a favor. I'll sell your tapes or whatever. So he brought all the tapes from Florida to this fucking train store. And I, and I remember specifically, you know, like those fold out signs that, that like, you know, say like, like wet floor or whatever yeah. that you can change the letters in. It just said VHS tapes. <laughs> it was like real little, like in the front. That's so weird. Yeah. And they were three bucks a piece. Three that, bucks well spent. That's, three, a, that's three, a steal. No, but that was expensive then. Well, at the Because oh. it was like, oh, $3 like a tape? So we ended up taking, you know, like, you know, a little five-finger discounting on there. <gasps> that was a steal. It was. Well, not <laughs> this one specifically. Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. But, the reference to him taking it. Yes, yes. But <laughs> in, the, in the score of stuff, because we would go there, there all the time, uh, I, had, I had grabbed Killer Clowns. Because I love, I loved it so much, and uh, this is my favorite artwork, by the way, with the fucking clown hand with the yeah, with the I love uh, that. with the earth spinning on it. If you can see on here, there's a bunch of uh, autographs. There are us. We signed it earlier. <laughs> they signed my tape, right? No, no, no. These it's the Kyoto Brothers because we went to um they had they had something called CritterCon okay. at the Mahoning Drive-in. I think I remember. Yeah, I yeah. remember you posting about that. I was sip of water, sip or of water. whatever's in this glass <laughs> for the Mahoning clown juice. Uh, <laughs> yeah okay yeah, or that Rudy juice we were talking about earlier <laughs> so they did CritterCon and they showed uh, Critters 1 and 2 and they had the Kyoto Brothers come out to do like a signing so um, that was probably one of the best experiences of my life this movie and the effects in this and the Kyoto Brothers in general are, are like a huge huge influence on uh, me growing up and doing wanting to do special effects and stop motion animation and things like that um they are the some of the they were the coolest dudes and they were some of the only people that I like when I met them I didn't know how I was going to react so I go up there and I'm finally up there and then I just start crying <laughs> like t- talking to them that's I, awesome I was like it was just like it was like a, it was an experience so so uh Charlie stops me and he's like he's like he's like it's okay. He's like, he's like, we we met Ray Harryhausen, and I'm like, oh my god, could you imagine like meeting Ray Harry? Like that to guy's, be their hero. That was their. I mean, I love Ray Harryhausen too, but like that was their guy. Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah. So uh, so we were so then we were bullshitting and stuff. And we were talking about like Land of the Lost, and you know when that's going to be released and all that kind of stuff. Because uh, they did the '90s uh, re- remake for mm-hmm. for Nickelodeon. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, one of the one of the best days like in my entire life. That's and awesome. And they and they signed my my Killer Clowns uh, tape. Now, there's one other thing I want to mention since we're on the topic of the Mahoning. Um, I got to see Killer Clowns in 35 millimeter because uh, Exum did their um, Tunnel Vision Tuesdays that they do there. So I got to see that in 35. The next or that weekend, they were doing a remake double take of the blob. So they did the 58 McQueen blob and the 88 blob Okay, with Shawnee Smith. So I just watched Killer Clowns on Tuesday. And then Saturday, I watched the 58 blob. Killer Clowns. I don't know. I had like a revelation. And I don't know if other people have noticed this, but Killer Clowns is nearly beat for beat the original blob movie. Oh, I had no idea. Now I, I want to watch them side I, by side. I, I, could, I could see it. I could see and it. And I had, it was so fresh in my mind. Like, I've seen Killer Clowns a bunch, but like, it was so fresh that when I was watching the Bob, I was like, 
why does this feel so familiar? And I'm like, oh my, this is <laughs> they, this is Killer Clowns. Like they the, the Kyoto's like took like that structure and put it and made it Killer Clowns. That's awesome. Even I, with like the comet and everything and, oh, yeah. and crashing and the old man and and them going to the police station and telling them something crazy and don't believe them and then they go to the uh, they go to the place to investigate. It, it like all the beats. Watch it. Watch watch them both back to back. I, I it's, was, it's crazy. I was thinking it a little bit, but I was like kind of put the thought out of my head quickly. But you're 100 percent right. Especially the meteor. You got the yeah. old man gets taken out yeah. right in the beginning yeah. and so on and so forth. It, it's crazy. It deviates at some point. But yeah, it, yeah. It, but it, that's still just an awesome way to, to or an awesome thing to notice. Yeah. yeah. Well, they're, well, they are huge. Like the Kyoto's themselves are huge fans of, of course, of like atomic age sci fi. Yeah. Right. So like just to, to notice that was just like amazing and i'm sure other people have noticed it before but i've never heard anybody talk about it or or mention it so that really kind of blew my mind first folks it's probably not the first time you heard it but if it is the first time you heard it definitely uh do the double feature because it's uh very interesting i I just may have to do that i actually prefer the 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 the, the remake but in that context i might have to. oh sure 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 what was your first experience with Killer Clowns? Do you remember? Oh, yeah. It must have been a big part. Of, I mean, this is probably a big part of your well, life, too. So there's there's a couple of reasons that I really like this. First off, I've, I've always been a horror fan. I've always been a B-rate horror fan. Um, and I've always been a, a, a big fan of clowns. Uh, my mom used to work you don't at say. a... You know, yeah. <laughs> my mom used to work at a uh, daycare center in Ocean City and like once a month or every, every once in a while, they would have Rainbow the Clown come in and do a show and do balloons and all that uh, for the kids. And that was my first crush. I have a thing for clowns. It is this big and it's rock hard. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. What about these clowns? Uh, Listen, there are two clown chicks in this movie <laughs> that 100% could get it. Absolutely. You're, you're just De- like the Terenzi brothers. Yeah, you're ready De- for it. De- are you Debbie's roommates? roommates? Oh, uh. man. I, that might be a reason I'm Polly. Any situation where I could have two, <laughs> two clown, clown chicks, chicks at the same time. You um, need to go to a fucking juggalo convention, man. Oh, man. Whoop, whoop. I, I, am, I am inflating as we speak thinking about this. That's a, that's a balloon joke. Much clown um, love. <laughs> But so my my first uh, interaction with this was I don't know if I had seen it before and knew that it it was coming on and I I wanted to see it or if I just heard the name and was like I have to get this I have to watch this movie we had recorded it off of whatever channel it was on TV. maybe it was HBO or something like that and I I couldn't wait to get home after school to rewatch it and I had a friend come over with me. Um, who was getting picked up by his mom in a little bit. And I, so I'm trying to fast forward through a VHS tape, which if you are old enough to remember trying to fast forward through a VHS tape is not easy at all. And I remember my friend at the time was, uh, was not really into it. He didn't know what he was in, in store to see. So he's like, yeah, listen, man, I gotta get going. My mom's going to be here. I, I, we don't know when the clowns are. I just wanted him to see the clowns because they were amazing. And he walked out of the house before I got to show him a clown, and I never spoke to him again. You do not walk out of killer clowns from outer space if you are my friend. That's it. That's a rule. I, I have very few rules. That's that's way up there at the top. You're there. cut off. Yeah. It's a good rule to live by. Yeah. yeah. Honestly. I have not met a person who doesn't love this movie. Maybe maybe not love this movie, but enjoy it. At least like it. At yeah, least like get a it, kick yeah. out of it, if yeah, nothing yeah, else. Yeah. Awesome. It's so awesome. I- I was going to save this for the end, but this movie is like the end all be all B movie that I was thinking it all morning after watching it, it, it you know, and again, I, I said this before the recording, uh, I haven't seen a ton of B movies, but out of all the ones I've seen, this is one I always go back. It doesn't even like it feels like a B movie, but it doesn't. It is a B movie, but it's just so fucking good. Yeah, is this the thing. is this is one of the films that I love introducing the people that haven't seen it before. Because you hear the name and it's killer clowns from outer space. There's just nothing about that that should go together, should make sense. So they go into it thinking this, I, I they have no idea what they're looking, like what they're in store for. And when they see it, it's fun. It's scary. Mm-hmm. You have so many questions. There's so many things that you're like, right from the beginning you want to know well wait a minute how is this going on what's going on? they walk into a tent there's a giant nuclear <laughs> like death star type scene like wait what am i how is this set up what is going on then you find out there's there's popcorn there's balloons there's cotton candy you're like i, I don't know what i'm watching <laughs> but i love all of it yeah. i want all of the cheese i want all of the the goofiness all of the 
I want all of the B. Which not, is a weird phrase I don't think uh, yeah. I've ever said. Not only is it, but to all your all of those points, it, it's comedy. Yeah. yeah, for sure. But there are some terrifying bone chilling sequences in this movie. Yeah. Which is a feat that is so hard to get right and it nails it like perfect in, in a in a movie called Killer Clowns, Clowns from, from Outer, Outer Space. Space. <laughs> and you know what uh, I had an epiphany today while I was rewatching this with Joe about how we kind of perceive it and why and mm. like what stance we we take and I I'll, I'll talk more about it when we get to that point uh but I I don't think there are many movies that th you can see the point where you're like this is why I'm essentially rooting for what would or should be the bad guy or the villain. Sure. It, it's crazy that I, I've waited so many times. I think it was something about the the nipples that really had me pay more attention <laughs> to this film. You could hardly see the nipples in the VHS one. Well, yeah, no. And, and believe me, I looked. It's, <laughs> you're pausing it. That's what you really were waiting for. You yeah. weren't trying to show your friend the clowns. It was the nipples. Well, or you if know you what? said that, maybe if they I had stuck said around. there are nipples in this movie, he might have been more. And then all of a sudden, clowns. What a weird bait and switch. Uh, <laughs> that scene's great. We'll get to it. That's my favorite. Well, one of my favorite scenes. So yeah, that, I mean, there's not there's not too much other uh, BTS stuff. We'll talk about it as we mm. go because uh, it's cru it, they're more crucial to the actual scenes themselves than talking about it. Obviously, the the Kyoto brothers. Uh, produce this film. Steven directs it. Charles and Steven uh, write it, and um, and uh, Ed produces it. But they all work on it together. And and Linda is a treasury. Uh, let's not be sexist here, Joe. Uh, well, I, that's fine. I don't know who Linda. Women, is. I, I got your back. I don't know if Linda is a sister. Or <laughs> Jesus Christ! <laughs> I don't know. Don't talk about the Kyotos like that. I don't know if it's a sister or a wife. I'm not sure. Uh, or what have you, but uh, but yeah, this is a Kyoto uh, movie through and through, from the effects of the directing to the writing to the producing, to the treasury and their team. But uh, the original score to this movie is done by uh, John Masari. Now, something I want to note because this this movie opens with the Dickies uh, doing the fucking Killer Clowns theme song, song, which is we were we watched the movie and right after we just kept fucking singing we just kept fucking singing it and talking we were about singing it while it was going on yeah too. yeah, yeah. It, how can you not it's just so damn good uh but john masari does the original score so you get some dickies and then you get john masari now uh real quick i wanted to note john masari went on tour with the movie so like you know how um goblin did their tours oh, yeah. and, and they would and they would show like all the films that they had uh done and played like a live music set to yeah. the films he did that with killer clowns so he sat there score and played the score to the movie with a live uh orchestra and i believe the dickies were there too that's wow. awesome to do like the intro music and then the whole rest of the the movie and this is why you should go out to live events as well yes. even if you've seen the movie a thousand times there's going to be experiences or things that are, that happen when you're there surrounded by other people go out and support live entertainment i would have given anything to see that me too um that I mean, I had the I had the luck of seeing Goblin and, and Claudio Simonetti do live scoring, but like killer clown, like to see fucking killer clowns with a live orchestra, that'd be amazing. Uh, that's like a bucket list. Yeah, yeah. That's not an orchestra, of... but like a live band. Yeah, no, yeah. I want to see it done with a with a live orchestra. Yeah, I want to yeah. see. <laughs> I want to go to like uh, at Carnegie Hall where they play the music of Killer, <laughs> Killer Clowns from Outer Clown. Space. Like that's the, the fucking uh, uh, what do they call the guy that leads it? The, uh, oh, the, conductor. the conductor. The conductor's like <laughs> 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 that probably doesn't even make sense. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, you guys want to get into this? However, you need to plot crunch this film for us. Oh, oh my God! Let's so, do it. Come on, you could do it. This is this is the story of uh, condensed. Yeah, condensed. Uh, Killer Clowns from Outer Space. That's there, <laughs> there, there you have it, folks. <laughs> Super condensed, but you're not wrong. Uh, yeah, it's it's the adventures of of normal people trying to battle these killer clowns from outer space to save mankind and the the hijinks, the deadly hijinks they get in along the way. I'd say that's correct. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> killer clowns from outer space. Holy shit. So with that being said. We open up. Now, I love this intro because it shows the, the town and we get a little bit of Officer Mooney played by John Vernon and we get Chris Titus, who's, Chris jo Titus who's Joe like Lombardo. so young. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and his cameo, basically. Or he's Bob McReed. I can't remember if he's Bob McReed or Joe Lombardo. He's one of them. Yeah. Oh, I think he's Bob what... McReed. 
Because his glasses are still in the, his Jeep. Uh, yeah. Reed? Bob McReed? That's his Jeep. Uh, yeah, later, the glasses. I love that. <laughs> yeah, now, now I'm, t- I'm thinking about that. If he goes, that that's that's Joe Lombardo. Well, that's or- when they're in the ship. And the dude's oh, in the... Yeah, well, yeah, we'll yeah, talk yeah, about yeah. it, yeah. Okay. Uh, I say Joe Lombardo, like, all the time. <laughs> Just, like, as an exclamation. Like, Joe Lombardo! <laughs> Um, <laughs> like they went out of their way to give this throwaway character like the full name. Yeah. Well, well, because uh, uh, Mike recognizes him. Yes, in the yeah. cocoon later. And, and listen, to be fair, they gave names right to here. all of the clowns. <laughs> yeah, hey, Joel, Joel uh, uh, they gave na- names to all of the clowns. They better have given them to all of the. the oh, actors I'm sure as well. And just real quick, shout out to uh, Cavity Colors oh, yeah. for for these for these dope. Uh, yeah, these killer clowns collections. These shirts, these shirts are awesome. I, I think um, they're. I know as of this recording, they're doing another run of them. I think. Anyway, right. I just they always got new killer clowns. Oh stuff. yeah, there's always and it, it, it's evergreen. Can can I just say how happy I was this past Halloween for as as big as a fan of killer clowns as I have been since I was nine years old i have never seen as much killer clowns from outer space merch as there was this past year and i missed I, out on all of it i got pins i got mm. wall mounts i got statues i got figures i got the cotton candy gun you fucking you didn't bring it it, it was it was so hard to get a hold of and it, i i went to so many different places trying to i think i went to like four or five different locations to try to get it before i ma- finally managed to get my hands on one but I, I now have more Killer Clowns from Outer Space merch than I have ever had in my entire life, and I could not be happier, unless I had somebody that loved me. <laughs> if you have an extra <laughs> Killer Clowns from Outer Space cotton candy gun, hit a brother up, because yeah. I need one of those, and I don't want to pay out the nose, but I'd happily yeah. pay you for it. If you have low standards and no morals, hit me up. Moviedumpsterpodcast at gmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> For either of those, honestly, I feel a little unprepared because I just I have the pops that are, that are really cool that we got mm. up here, but I also have the old uh, SOTA figures or soda, however you want to say that. Um, but they're in a box, so I couldn't yeah, dig but, them out. But to be fair, this this case right here, oh, is this is all, my pride and joy, is, yeah. and I have the the one sheet in the in the closet. Um, the Trick or Treat Studios okay. figures that they just announced. Oh, yeah, they look awesome. I cannot wait to fucking get those. And Mego just put out uh, Jumbo. I think they put out Jumbo and Slim in like the clo- the cloth eight inch figures. Oh, very cool. Yeah, um, I think I, so. I love, like an hour before we started filming this, I, I got tagged on Facebook for those uh, for those figures oh, that that's are coming right. out. And I commented, I was like, you have no idea how relevant this is because I don't know if we're allowed to say what day it is, but we are not filming this the day that you are watching it. We did it beforehand. Not even the day before. <laughs> yeah. And so we were talking about how awesome this is and that it's his pride and joy. And I think in honor of tradition and um, and really just carrying on the uh, the love of killer clowns, the same way that you stole this from that train guy, yeah. I will be taking this home with me later. I, if you oh. if you take your eyes off it for one second, that's that's mine. I don't think so. <laughs> um, <laughs> you and Tony, I'm gonna beat you with a fucking stick. Get oh away my from my God, shit, Tony. He wants that goddamn carnosaur two clock. Celebrate it with Tony. Me. I'll, I'll grab it for you. <laughs> you can celebrate it with us. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Um. <laughs> So so we get that whole opening bid and the, the music, you know, the Dickies music is playing and we get, we kind of get a bunch of different uh, uh, characters that we're going to see at the movie and get a feel for the town and stuff. But then we go to the top of the fucking world, guys, because we're making out, we're sucking and fucking. Yeah, we is. And the Terenzi brothers themselves, they roll up in their ice cream truck. Jojo. <laughs> a tasty uh, treat while you screw. Yeah. We brought our goodies here to you. A tasty treat for while you screw. Yeah, they are. They, I mean, there's a lot of characters that crack me up in this movie, but they are just like every line out of their mouth is a, is a fucking banger. Cool off those hot lips with those <laughs> frozen fruity bars. Icy Wicey's fudgy wudgy bars. Oh, yeah. What's your favorite frozen delight? Um, the Lekka oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rudy's like actually yeah. thinking about Still it. Still with me. I'm sorry. like, ah, So I was going to think. <laughs> Never mind. It's a bit, Rudy. It's a bit. <laughs> my my first answer when you said, what's your frozen, your favorite frozen delight? I thought Eskimo pussy. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, I you was, mean Eskimo pot. Oh, yeah. That would yes. work too. Yes, yeah. Um, so, so we get there, so there is an internal battle going on where I'm like children's entertainer don't I, like there's video proof of the stuff that I normally only say behind uh, <laughs> locked doors and I'm like no don't do that and then I realize where I am and it's expected so. I th- I've thought about releasing censored versions of the show but I don't think that would no, do well no nobody wants to see us that's a lot of work too now so. yeah 
You get what you pay for. You only get what you give, which is apparently a bunch of sexual innuendo. <laughs> um, so Rich and Paul, it's Ramsey brothers were introduced to. Everybody's yelling at them because they're trying to get it in. Yeah. And they're fucking talking about ice cream. Except for uh, their best pal, Grant Kramer. Grant Kramer's here. Mike fucking Tobacco. What a name. <laughs> yeah, right? Why Why that last name? Do they even actually say it in the movie? Or is no, that like the, you never. know, uh, end credit trivia? It, I think it's like an end credit thing. They never say his last name. And Debbie's here. Suzanne Snyder, of yes. course. Debbie Stone. Um, you said you never saw Suzanne Snyder in another movie before. No, I, so we were talking about this before. I don't think aside from uh uh the the old guy and and Royal Dano. Yeah, we'll Royal Dano you. and um and Mahoney or Mooney. I don't think I had seen anybody in anything else. Really? Yeah, I, and maybe I just wasn't noticing it. But then uh, you guys just went over leaping leprechauns. We sure last did. Week. I was about to bring it up, <laughs> and and he was in that. Grant and, Kramer is in that. Yeah, and I wanted to kick him in the teeth the entire movie. He's uh, a real he asshole. is such a <laughs> dick bag. John, yeah. John, what's his name? John McKinney. John John uh, uh, Dennehy. There you go. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. I mean, that, that that is his character. That is Mike later. Obviously, yes, yeah. he gets the he survives the killer clown attack. Right. And then he and he lays out the plans for Ireland land. That's what he does. <laughs> Changes his name. You know, Why? Mike Tobacco was obviously an alias. <laughs> Why was it not just called Irie Land? Ireland, Ireland Land is the dumbest thing ever. Ire hyphen land. I'm so glad that Rawhead Rex what... was the mascot. Yeah. Mm. He's there. Yeah, he is there. He's running around ripping people's fucking heads He's off. He's pissing on people. Oh, yeah. They're taking photos. You got the makes... mascot. Is now obviously... I want to go to that theme yeah. park. <laughs> you have mascots of like the priest from Rawhead. Just people that walk around going, yeah. here's God. God. <laughs> Get a photo op as they're saying it. <laughs> Lubbin's there in the back cranking for oh, them well. shamrock shakes, dude. Go back and check out that Leaping Leprechauns, our St. Patrick's Day special. The Grant <laughs> Kramer fucking lore is deep. Uh, oh, and the Lubbin. I loved it. Oh my God. You know, Rudy, if only you knew. I mean, we talked about this on the Shakes the Clown episode. You 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 were involved in the creation of Corpse Fucker. Yeah, yes. Uh, whether in, involuntarily or not, we don't know. Uh, but Lubden, I mean, there was a lot of Lubden in that movie. He's got yeah. the fucking the well is basically yes. there. Yeah. Oh yeah, well the the beginnings. Yeah. Well the, yeah. So but, with uh with Prehisteria three. Yes. That yes. was that was, and I remember, and you said, oh, Rudy was part of this, and I went, oh, that's gonna be my legacy. <laughs> it now. is your that's, legacy. Uh, for the uninitiated, Lubden <laughs> is the name of the leprechaun from the Leprechaun series, even though they're different leprechauns from from each movie. Right. And uh, just to finish the uh, the thought, because why not yeah. go back uh, <laughs> over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster. We put out that leprechaun commentary. Track. One. Yeah, exactly. Leprechaun one. The OG leprechaun. Get yeah. that full commentary. J Jennifer track. Aniston's uh, best movie. Probably not. I, <laughs> it's our first movie, though. I don't watch a lot of Jennifer Aniston yeah. movies, so it's my favorite Jennifer uh, Aniston movie. Office Space is definitely better, <laughs> and that's about my only other touchstone. Uh, but yeah, check that out. What was, the, what was the one years. where she was like stripping in it? Uh, Whatever that one is, I like that, that one. That's Joe's favorite. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so Grant Kramer's there with his girlfriend, Debbie, and they see this, like Joe was talking about earlier, this blob-ass fucking meteor fucking fly through the sky. It's a shooting star. Let's go so, check it out. Well, I, I have watched this movie so many times, and this was the first time I realized that with where they were laying, they would be staring directly at the roof of that car. Oh, the they top down They would not shot? be able to see the, the sky at all. How have I not noticed this in that long? I have no idea. But also, I wanted I want to know how comfortable a fucking blow up raft is in the back of like a hatchback. It, it can't be at all. There's only that thin, the thin plastic. Like that's supposed to protect you from sinking in the water. Yeah, but it, there's it's nothing on in the, the side, but not in the middle. Unless I you mean, got a blanket in yeah, there. Yeah, but that's where you're gonna be in the middle for the most part, right? Also, well, I mean, why is everybody fucking with all their doors and windows open? They're wearing sweaters. It must it, be cold. It's called voyeurism. Though. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. They're looking. Chris Titus is looking at uh, yep. Grant Kramer. Yeah, right, yeah. They're, they're watching yeah. each other. Fuck. And they get. They're off winking on that. at each yeah. other. I, like, I don't like think a, there yeah. is one couple in this movie I wouldn't watch. Screw. I mean, that's your prerogative. What about the Terenzi brothers on each other? Um, a little uh, incest yeah, you with know the what? <laughs> You know what? If they're going to do it, I'll watch it. Uh, so anyway. So <laughs> speaking of Terenzi brothers, because this is a plot point that kind of goes throughout the film. They have these dates. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and they make Well, they take them to the top of the world. That's the goof. Right. They bribe them with ice cream. They bribe them with ice cream. They're like, hey, I'm not taking my clothes off. Take us home. They're like, uh. <laughs> you said we can have all the ice cream we wanted, but you didn't say anything about parking. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. 
Um, so they they split. They go to see what's on, what's happening at the drive-in. I love Mike. I think like, that might work. Yeah. I love Mike. He's like, I love those guys. They're great. Anytime <laughs> I want to have a good time, I call up the Terenzi brothers. <laughs> Rudy brought up a good point. He was like, how the fuck does Debbie not know who the Terenzi brothers are? They seem infamous in this town. I, yeah, yeah, I don't everybody get Everybody knows. I mean, and they drive around in a giant- <laughs> Oh, those assholes in the ice cream yeah. truck. Like, like, you like Sweet Tooth. Know- <laughs> even if even if she didn't know them by name, you haven't seen that truck driving around, and she was yeah. like, "Oh, those guys," or at least, yeah. or at least heard them because they constantly leave the speaker on by they're, accident. They're always on the fucking horn, like saying shit to people. Uh, but yeah, the, so there's a shooting star. It lands and it, it flies over Royal Dano's house, and he's outside yeah. with his dog. I love that name. You see that little sky doggy zip down in there, Pooh? I fucking love Royal Dano so much. We covered. Oh, we we did a watch along of Ghoulies Two, uh, where he makes an appearance. What? Didn't we do something else with Royal Dano in it? I wish I could give you an actual answer, but I don't remember. Is this the way you treat family? You can call me Gramps. I love Royal Dano. And he, like, I'm, I always remember from this movie and Ghoulies 2. Those were the two big ones. I'm like, oh, the old guy. R.I.P. So it flies over. And again, just like the blob, you know, he goes looking for, like, the meteorite or whatever. He thinks he, it's Halley's Comet. Yeah, oh, it's yeah. Halley's Comet. And and only because he was reading a science fiction book that said it. I'd like to see the take where he was reading a porno and had to come up with, whoa, what is that? That has to do with nudity. Like, it's, it's a hundred foot woman. <laughs> <laughs> That's Haley's black hole. No, no, no. <laughs> so, uh, so he goes out there and there's this fucking circus tent in the middle of the woods. And this guy's like, oh shit, the circus. I didn't know it was going to be around in these parts. I love the circus. So he goes up to it and he's like, something's really weird about this. I'm like, you think, old man? <laughs> Wait, hold on. You skipped the line. He says, he says to Pooh, maybe they'll give us free free tickets. Maybe we can get us some free passes. Let's let's imagine for a second that this is a real circus tent in the middle of the forest. Here's an old guy with a <laughs> shovel and a lantern and a dog walking up to the, the ticket booth. He's going, got dementia. Can, can I have a, a free ticket for me and my dog? Like, what? <laughs> And a shovel. Yeah, yeah, like if they say no, they're getting cracked. They're right getting in the, the head. Sho- well, they're gonna get decapitated in the buckets for the head. Oh, yeah. oh, oh right, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, then Pooh Bear's gonna eat the rest. Yeah, uh, of course, of yeah. course. Eat his eyeballs out. Yes. Uh, I love how they just immediately just start hitting you with the clowns. They do not wait at all. No, oh, and I so I love good. it for that because we get right down to fucking business. Yeah, they you land. Hear that Zach? If you had stayed just a little bit longer, we would have gotten to the goddamn clowns on that VHS. But no, your mom was there. What, what? Like ten minutes in, right? <laughs> yeah. Once you see that shadow creeping, that's oh, like mimicking him from the so opposite good. side. It's like yeah, it's like creeping across uh-huh. the tent. Um, and, and, and then it grabs the dog. Yeah, yeah. This like circle like just appears and he. He, like nets the dog. Yeah. Are they eating dogs too? I, I mean, guess these things um, eat everything, man. Yeah. Uh, or they just kill for fun, but we'll get in that did, a little bit did, later. Yeah, but you think Pooh Bear got what? He got cotton candy cocooned, right? Maybe he's in one of the balloons. What do you think? I think they caught him for Shorty. That's I, Shorty's lunch. Oh, maybe. Yeah, yeah. Possibly, possibly. Or his and, new pet, maybe. And I don't think the balloon, but we'll go over that later. Too. Yeah. Okay. okay. So then he's freaking the fuck out. Where's my Pooh Bear? Yeah. Give him back. Which. I'm kind of with the old man. I'd be pretty upset myself. He fucking punches this tent and like breaks his hand yeah. because it's a spaceship. <laughs> and then he grabs the tent uh, <laughs> string and he l- gets electrocuted. This <laughs> thing is wired. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's wired. Uh, you think that's enough to kill this poor bastard? It's not. So his dog is gone. He just got the shit shocked out of him. And this disgusting clown motherfucker Jumbo shows up and he's like, don't fat shame. That's, That's his name. His name. No, no, oh, this, you, this disgusting clown. The fat one, you know. No, no, no. The disgusting. This amazingly m- awesome, <laughs> visually fantastic clown who is named Fatso appears. Go it's on. Jumbo. You mother. You blew it, Rudy. You blew it. We're going to edit no, this. No, no, no. Oh, of course. The effects look fucking amazing. They're incredible. These things look <sighs> disgusting and amazing. But I'm saying, in the context of the movie, Royal Dano's sitting there like, oh, okay. How you doing, Miss Clown Man? And he fucking zaps him with the cotton candy yeah. gun. Yeah. <laughs> I love I love every time or, or a lot of the times that these cotton candy guns go off and capture people. It's not the same. It's not yeah. consistent. Sometimes uh, sometimes there's uh, there's e- like extra webbing, which is the only way I can describe it. That it's goes a low all budget. Movie. Yeah, it's uh, sometimes the shoes are out. Sometimes it's just it's amazing to see uh, every there, time it's different. There's definitely plot thingies, but. I'm okay with all of them. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Um, so then we go back to the police station and Mooney's bringing in Peter Murphy and Robert Smith. <laughs> 
And um, that one dude looks like a goddamn clown. Uh, I don't, I, you kept saying that. I'm like, no, he doesn't. He absolutely does. He's got the hair. He's got the he's got the white face. He's got the the lipstick, and his hair is very clownish. Yeah, he looks like Robert Smith. Robert Smith looks like a clown. Then <laughs> I just lost all of my goth followers. Yeah, I was gonna say they just like they Robert Smith. He's he's rolling around in his grave. I mean, he's enjoying himself, but he's rolling around in it. So Mooney brings him in. And you find out he's like, dead. Like John, I know, I know. That's why I was like, wait a second. <laughs> R.I.P. R.I.P. The living people. Yeah. He's the Walking Dead. No. Oh. Anyway, so Mooney's there. And uh, you get this glimpse at John Vernon's character, Mooney, because he's a real asshole cop. He brings these kids in for just walking around because they had a bottle of wine or whatever. Yeah. And uh, we get introduced to Dave, uh, who's like the deputy. Yeah. And he's like, he's like, what the fuck are you doing, Mooney? And he's like, he's like, these kids, they were what, caught him boozing it up in the park. And uh, he's like, we weren't doing nothing, man. We were walking around with a bottle of wine. It was a nice night. And Dave's like, God damn it. He's like, why don't you just do your drinking on campus? I want to fuck with this idiot who keeps yeah. bringing you in. And he's like, it's our town too, man. Uh, I love how Mooney is like right from the get go, like just this like washed up guy who just like clearly hates his job, but thinks he's like an expert at it. He says he was in Korea, so I'm pretty sure he was with Charnetsky, dude. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> I was in Korea, yeah. ma'am. He, him and Charnetsky were there together. They, they trade recipes, chunky chicken <laughs> recipes. You know, Charnetsky sitting there writing down like. Okay, you know, honey roll. Okay, write this down. I gotta tell Mooney about this later. Call this place up. Hey, Mooney, do you got the line in the chunky chickens or what? What is this, a joke? What is this? <laughs> Tarnetsky, you fucking with me right now? to break me down. Drop uh, me out of the force. God, imagine that. Uh, demonic ball. toys, everybody. Yeah. Uh, uh, but yeah, Mooney, he kills me because he's like, you know, it's it's a little stereotypical now, but at the time, I, I don't know as much, but I love it how he's like, yeah, Dave, yeah, you went to a police academy. He's like, you think you're better than me? And he's like, that's not what but I'm you saying. you want to rewrite the laws, Mr. Police Academy. Yeah. So wait, that had, how in that case did Mooney become a cop? Did he not go to the police academy? They just gave this guy a gun I and think, said- I think he says Mr. A, police academy because he does everything exactly by the book. Sure. And Mooney, what a terrible thing for police to do. I'm glad we grew out of that trope. <laughs> Mooney, they, that's a big spotlight of this because they, they focus on him being an asshole and then he gets what's coming to him. Yeah. You, you, know? you get both flavors of cop in this. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. She's like, you know, uh, when you bring people in here, I don't want to see you beating them up. I swear, Kurt, that badge of yours is history or whatever. So he so yeah. locks them up and he books them. And uh, and yeah, we're back. We're back in the forest. We're walking around. <gasps> and mm -hmm. Grant Kramer is, is, you know, you know, rubbing up on Suzanne Snyder. Chief say the 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 uh, shooting star went that way. Yeah, yeah. So, that's about the only thing I was like, oh, that didn't, really offensive Native American accent. I was like, maybe you could have cut that one, Kyoto. Uh, I, I get it's eighty eight, but ooh, that was rough. I, think I he was, was just goofing with his girl. I would like to point out how easily they found. A, a shooting star in the middle of the woods from on the top of the world through whatever they went. They found that that big top forest easier than I found Joe's house getting here last night. The zigs and the zag. The only good part about me trying to find it, I saw deer on somebody's front yard and they were they were big deer and I'm an idiot. And I was very happy. Uh, yeah, your place is a pain in the ass. To I, find I was standing in the middle of the road trying to direct Rudy that was. Three blocks the other way. Yeah, I, wasn't I saw him driving because my fucking town is dead at night. And it was like one. It, it was almost one. Yeah, it was like one something. And I was ignoring him because I was looking at deer. <laughs> <laughs> so, so they come up on the circus tent and they're like, oh, my God, there's a circus tent. And and Debbie's like, OK, this is fucking weird. Let's go back. And he's like, no, let's check it out. Come on. Which I, we we found out there's a deleted scene. Yeah. So they go into the they go into the tent. Yeah. And and uh, as soon as they walk in. It's clearly not a fucking circus tent. It's it's a it's a clown spaceship. That's what it looks like. Yeah, no, decorated right by that. clowns R us. <laughs> Great line, by the way. Yeah, yeah I, I love this set, and it's just like again. I know it's a B movie, but like they really just it's... used every dollar of this budget perfectly. And you can you can tell what everything's made out of, mm. but it doesn't cheapen it because they use it in such a great way, and it looks so fucking fun and I, awesome. I want my hallways in my house. Yeah, like oh my it's God. so cool. Awesome. And I want to talk about this big top uh, for a bit, if you don't mind, because like 
like you're saying, everything in here is like clown related. It's like it's like funky colors and it's like futuristic, but the shapes and the yes. col- and the colors and the way that it's lit and everything. All, all the buttons are clown noses. It looks like yeah. a fun house. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Especially yeah. later, there's a scene towards the end. It's a hallway they go down. It's like moving like this yeah. and that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I love it. And they, they end up in the, uh, I don't even know what you want to call this, like the cotton candy storage chamber. Well, before, yeah. before they get there, mm-hmm. before they get there, just real quick. I want to talk about the deleted scene. Um, yeah. about uh, when they're walking in and Mike's like, oh, it's that, it's that uh, Circus uh, Fantastique. You know, yeah. it's that European, European shit. Cr- surrogate. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a cold cut scene because he does his whole bit and then Suzanne Snyder says, oh, well, which way do you want to go? There's a whole like Phoebe Kate's Gremlins <laughs> monologue about clowns and what? going to the circus Yeah, that actually ties back to when she's abducted later. Spoiler alert. Yeah. <laughs> Why was that cut? But she tells this whole story. She's like, um, what did she say? She, you know, she was at the circus and yeah. like this clown came over and like picked her up by the shoulders, yeah, took her away from and her then, family, like, put her put him on her back and like ran her out into the middle of the fucking thing. And she was like freaked out and oh then circled by a bunch of clowns and she was terrified. Yeah, and like disgusting pancake makeup. She was yeah, saying. Yeah, she and she very that also explains why she was hesitant about going there in the first place. She has a fear of clowns. Yeah, yeah. which is called chlorophobia. Phobia. Huh. That's yeah. not fear of chlorine. No, no, by no, the way. no. Because you don't know about Why chlorine. Why the fuck do you get chlorophobia out uh, of clown? People make up words. I, I, huh. what, what is that? What the fuck is cl- clown in Latin? Uh, probably something like chlora. Clown. Clown. Oh. Clown. So <laughs> I, I love Clarna. taking taking into consideration consideration if that scene wasn't cut. It goes like this. I am really terrified of clowns. I had a really bad uh, experience at the circus. I don't like them. And Mike replies, okay, let's keep going. <laughs> yeah. Like, what? <laughs> that's all great and all, but let's go. Yeah. yeah. Like, oh, my God. I think that's the why they cut it, because they're yeah. like, yeah. why didn't they just turn around, turn tail, yeah, and leave? Mike and is it, an ass. I mean, it's a little heavy, too, for this film. Maybe that's the other logic. But I kind of uh, would have liked that. I don't I, know. I don't think so, because, again, like, there's scenes we're going to get to that are just, like, they're, they're very serious and sure. very scary and played for... And tension the, and horror. The implication on some of them. Yeah, it's like, whoa. But before we get to the cotton candy okay, room, okay. we get to the fucking Death Star shaft. Oh, because we see this. Right. They, they like, Mike presses all these buttons and <laughs> yeah, they get the, in the this. clown noses. They get in this fucking elevator. And I'm like, dude, this is not a circus tent, by the way. Anyway, they go in. Yeah. They come into this room. And uh, there's a giant like nuclear reactor like in the like at the core of the yeah. spaceship. Yeah. And uh, it there's looks like a like, thousand foot drop off. Dude, it looks like they're going to fucking grapple hook over to be- old Ben across <laughs> oh, yeah. the way. Yeah, because they're I, I don't understand what the point of that platform is. Like, let's say it was a maintenance thing. Like, OK, we got to get to the, the yeah. main reactor to fix it. Once you open up that door and you're there, all you can do is stare at whatever is broke. Yep, that's that's the thing that's broke. It sure it sure whatever. is working good. <laughs> So then after that, they go over to this cotton candy chamber I mentioned a, a little bit ago. It's fucking so cool. Uh, and and just like, like Rudy mentioned, like about like spider web or cotton webs. It's like, I, I feel like a lot of this is playing off like that spider web shit. Especially yeah. when we find out what happens later, like what's happening on Joe's t-shirt with the silly straw. Oh, yeah, yeah. Fast uh, was taking a sip. Yeah, yeah. They, they definitely are pulling from like spiders and shit with the cotton candy with people in it. Sure. It's cool. Sure. Yeah, I, like, I like the- They're uh, cocoons. Yeah. yeah, I like the amalgamation of the ideas because it's like they're thinking of every, you know, the Kyoto's thought of every like thing that is fucked up about clowns or that people perceive of clowns and then just added that horror element on oh, it and just, and just blew it out like- they got this popcorn that you find out later is is more dangerous than you might expect. Yeah. Uh, again, the cotton candy, even those balloons they capture some people in. Yeah. Well, it's like, what if clowns were actual like monsters yes. or aliens in this case? Well, and you know what? Now that now that we're talking about the clowns and the spiders, it reminds me of the original uh, miniseries of It, where Pennywise, yeah. who oh, was yeah. the clown, became yeah. that weird space alien spider thing, yeah. which was terrible. Like I did, I hated that any part of it. But uh, I I we, actually like the design yeah. of that. I mean, that's probably that's not. Not like a hot take or anything. I know a lot of people hate it, but like I think it's I think it's fine. I, I it's don't cool. I love it. the stop motion and stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, I mean the the stop motion is awesome. I guess I just wanted something better than sure. Space Spider. It sure. also is a made for TV fucking thing. Yeah, we we watched that, uh, and I think <laughs> yeah, Joe, that we, wasn't that wasn't uh, <laughs> top priority like Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I watched it a few months back. I think we even mentioned it on a live show, and I think Joe, you had said something similar that yeah, you we, had recently rewatched. Yeah, we it. Watched, we recently rewatched it. It's a, it's a great flick. It holds it's up. a great miniseries. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, they're in there looking around like, what the fuck is this? But to your point of the cotton candy place, we, it's a big map painting. and when Or 
I think a lot the background is matte painting, but the fo the foreground is is practical. But it's n nearly empty. Yeah, there's, there's a only few a handful, handful right, of like right. cotton candy, candy cocoons. cocoons. Hey, cotton candy cocoons <laughs> hanging up on the like these drying yeah. hooks, right? Or storage hooks, whatever you want to call it. It's like a storage room for these for the bodies. Because, it's a big refrigerator. Yeah, because this is this is where uh, Debbie's like nobody stores cotton candy like this. He's like, relax, it's this cotton candy factory, and he fucking he's yeah. like, look at it. And he rips the fucking face off, and it's Royal Dano, and they're like, oh shit. Yeah. <laughs> Kind of great. I, I love of all of the places he could have ripped off a piece of that cotton candy. It just so happened to be where the face was. Yep. And then here it comes. They they hear somebody. They hear a clown coming. And who do they see? <gasps> Joe Lombardo. <laughs> and he drops his <laughs> flashlight. And the cl and the Rudy clown sees yeah. him. Yeah. Ah. Which all right. So we're gonna we're gonna jump ahead in a little bit. Uh, or, or jump ahead to a scene where uh this clown that we see is in front of a drugstore. And mimics a robotic ape in a in a suit that's in front of this drugstore. Yeah. And he does this little hand waving motion. Since I was little, I've always replicated that as because I'm a fucking nerd, is why. Uh I've who, replicated who hasn't that replicated as, this that's, yeah, that as loves this like movie. the robot. And we just found out today, because we research the things that we do, we come to you fully informed that, that mostly informed. that clown's <laughs> name is Rudy. It's me. Now is that you, you didn't even know it, but you were no, already. Yeah, I just yeah, I'm, you got the I'm influence famous. there. I'm yeah, trying it's... to remember now. Now is that the clown that's actually on the cover? Yes, that's, that's the one I always no, think of. This one, this one looks slightly different from the rest. Like, I don't know if it's the hair or whatever. Uh, it's... I don't know. They didn't. I, Rudy is the okay, right? But it kind of looks like him. Yeah, Rudy, it looks I like don't him. have it out, but Rudy is the clown that. Um, the SOTA toy or soda, however you yes, want to say yes, that yes. toys, that's who they released first was God, yeah. the Rudy clown with yeah. the popcorn gun. Because here, <laughs> um, he's got this fucking popcorn rifle I and they're it. running away from him and he shoots this popcorn out and it flies down all the fucking corridors and lands all over their backs. It's such a cool scene because this popcorn's flying at them through all these fucking hallways and it they jump out of the tent and they're just covered with it. Yes, it's such a high powered weapon yeah. to shoot popcorn. One of the best fucking lines in the movie, popcorn, why popcorn? <laughs> Popcorn, cause they're clowns. That's why. Yeah, why else? Yeah. yeah, Rudy. Rudy was saying things like that throughout the. Why? Why would they do that? Cause the clowns. Yeah, that's, that's why. That's, yeah, that's the only reason. Like, what else do you need? <laughs> it, it should all be clicking for you, Rudy. So, all right. Now we we had discussed something about the popcorn. Do we want to talk about that now or a little uh, bit later? Let's when talk. That comes let's up? talk. Let's talk about it later because it, it's, it's not a popcorn. That. But just remember that the popcorn is still on their clothes later. Yes. However. This is the moment I've been waiting for oh. because this was this is one of the best uh, scenes in the movie because um, Spikey over here is outside and he has his little he makes his fucking <laughs> little <laughs> balloon <laughs> yeah, he makes his little fucking balloon dog and uh, balloon dog <laughs> oh by the way the killer clowns have their own language but also understand English but it's like this weird gibberish shit. Yeah, sometimes you can kind of make it like there's a one that you can definitely hear an uh oh at one point. Yeah, like, and, like and put up your dukes, put up your dukes. Yeah, like so Spikey, so Spikey's there and Rudy's like balloon dog, and he and he makes this fucking balloon dog in like 0.5 seconds, and it's a sentient balloon dog that they use to like sniff yep. out Suzanne Snyder and Greg Kramer. Now, how fast? Can you make being a balloon artist? How fast can you make a balloon dog? Can you make it as fast as uh, as Spikey here? So there, there is a couple of, a couple of notes that I want to touch base on. Uh, the balloon dog that they make in the movie is kind of a combination of a bunch of balloons okay. that are already kind of started and twisted in the beginning oh. before he starts maneuvering them around. Uh, now, according to this pop, this pop is using a one balloon, two, si uh, 260 balloon, which means it's two inches around and 60 inches long when it's fully inflated. So the, the balloon dog that the pop is holding is not the one that they make in the movie. For here, I'll, I'll, I'll do a couple of things. I'll make the balloon dog like he has. That's the, the generic first balloon dog that you've probably gotten or made if you ever dabbled in balloons and then i will teach you guys how to make a balloon dog that sounds as great well. 
which if you're watching at home, you can follow the instructions and and learn to make them yourself. Let's I want to do well, I want to do a single balloon dog, but then okay. what we're going to do is you're going to we're going to make the one from the movie and start for the movie. Okay. And then I'm going to do a fucking side by side of Spikey making it and you oh. and we'll see who's the fastest. Oh my god, that's there's the pressure. I can practice. <laughs> I didn't uh So actually, yeah, actually we'll do a couple of things. One, I'll show you uh, the one balloon dog. I'll show you the two balloon dog that I normally make. Uh, if I'm out at a restaurant or whatever, a little bit more detail looks a little awesome. And then we'll we'll try to do this this big multi balloon dog. Let's do it. All right, sounds good. So I'm gonna throw a handful of these balloons out here. Um, That's hella balloons, man. Holy yeah, cow! This is this is a small portion of what uh what we worked with. I'm gonna go with. Uh, he's got a purple over there, so I'm gonna do a purple here. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, just. <laughs> Watch dead. Right in my mouth. Sorry, son. Wrong pocket. <laughs> Whoa. Oh, All my right. goodness. Is that a balloon in your pocket? He just happy to see me. A uh, little column A, a little column B. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. All right. So, for, uh, do we want to time the one balloon dog or? Careful, that's uh, go off. Hey, whoa! Uh, all right. Do we want to time this one or I guess we just go back and watch? No, I guess we do it this way. How do you want to do this? For just the one balloon dog timing? Okay. We'll, we'll, okay. We'll, we'll time this one. Let's just do, we'll, we'll do this real quick. All right. Okay. Are you ready? Yes. Three, two, one, start. Stop. <laughs> five seconds. <laughs> not five point nine seconds. Wow. And and look, it's the same one he's got. <laughs> that was incredible. <laughs> that was pretty awesome. Thank dude. you. Thank you. That's uh, that's lots of practice and very little social life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but dog. Now I'm gonna, I'm gonna. This motherfucker's going. Up oh yeah, in the, uh, in the, in the video dungeon. Yeah, hundred percent. That is beautiful. So, um, all right. Now we gotta, now we gotta see if you're faster than Spiky. A killer clown is is Rudy faster than a killer clown from outer space making a sentient balloon dog. I mean, in the MDU, it's absolutely sentient. You know, John Hurt's got one of those, like, in a side room. You know, he's got that cat from Uninvited that's, like, fairly oh, yeah. eating people. Yeah, the mad cat from Uninvited. Yeah, yeah he's got yeah. poisonous venom and shit. Kills George Kennedy. <laughs> George Kennedy's still on that couch somewhere, he's rotting. Like, please, someone end my life, please. Let me go back to the fucking, to the, to the uh, naked gun. I felt really bad about Tony Hudson because she was like, oh, yeah, I escaped the cat and I got my yacht back, but then I got killed by Leatherface. Wow, mm. as you do. Check out that Leatherface, uh, the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 commentary track. Yes. it's a lot of balloons. Yeah. All right, so now... Okay, so this is how many that he has to start with in, so, the, in the movie? It's funny. I didn't realize until we were watching it today uh, that it was so many balloons that he did. I thought they kind of just... They just went... Yeah, like, they just I thought went they with did that one, with, yeah. this, with this, one, with this um, one job here. But for size-wise, you can see that that's <laughs> obviously not big enough to hunt down people. No. Uh, so, like I said, they had started with Right, because it's got the long legs that stick out yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Essentially, we're going to do it like this, where if he started like this with a handful of them and got to... Audio listeners, if you're yeah. not watching this video, go do it right now. <laughs> hearing like those balloons <laughs> squeaking <laughs> in their car and uh, on their phone. This is incredible. <laughs> what other podcast is bringing you live balloon, balloon dogs. tricks? What? <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> breaking new ground, guys. <laughs> Alright, so essentially okay. when... That's how big it is? Yeah, when he's got it's... it? Now, this motherfucker's... This, look at that's a big dog. Yeah. Okay. It's a it's a great Dane. It looks no. like it looks like the goddamn founding titan. That thing. Okay. <laughs> so, all right. So I'm gonna stand up to do this to kind of give you an example of what he happened. So I'll try to talk loudly into the microphone. Okay. Okay. So, Rudy's got all of his fucking balloons. So when he walks out of the tent, it's it's too. You're okay. gonna be too low on this. So when he walks out of the tent, he has this kind of contraption in his hand. So he's got this. He's got this type of balloon in his hand yeah. when he walks out of the and tent. And he walks out and kind of does this. <laughs> And then let's just say, holy shit, dog. Kinda, kinda looks like it. I think the only difference is this. Yeah, it looks pretty close. I think that was less than 0.5 seconds. It was definitely less than 0.5 seconds. I think it was like 0.2. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're gonna put the clip in <laughs> where, where, where Spikey does the fucking does the dog trick. That's pretty cool. That's amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So I'm not going to lie, that is the first time I have ever made 
that balloon dog. Well, that was <laughs> amazing. <laughs> so we got we got our little boy and we and we got our big dog back there, the Great Dane dog. Yeah. That was pretty impressive. Now we get to teach you guys. Okay, let's do All it. Right. Head on over to patreon.com slash movie dumpster to find out how to make your own balloon dog and see if us, the dumpster dudes, could make our own. Available to all tiers. So let's get back to Killer Clowns from Outer Space. That was very cool. Oh my god, that's like insane. You are a uh, master, Thank Rudy. You're here. a very um, good balloon artist. I, I've been so I know over two hundred animals. Really? Yeah, they all look like dogs, but I know them, and that's the important. Oh, part. Oh, good. Yeah, I'm working on uh, making a life size woman, but she keeps popping before I finish. <laughs> <laughs> Making her Joe. Make- I told you yeah. that she was I'm he was fucking fuck those balloons. So <laughs> so Debbie and Mike go are heading are heading back. What a segue. <laughs> <laughs> I'm fucking her, Sean. So Debbie and Mike are I mean, I was talking about fuckers. sucking your dick for five minutes. Oh like, God. let's not even like kid ourselves. Jesus Listen, Christ. I'm not doing this podcast for free. <laughs> uh <laughs> not I, said the fly. Not again, anyway. The- <sighs> Yes, they go to the police station. Debbie might go to the police station because they have a friend there, Dave. Well, Debbie has a friend, you know. She keeps the whole uh, ex-boyfriend thing in the back pocket. And I love, I, they go they go to see him, but uh, you also get the shot of the clowns walking towards town in this fucking great soundtrack oh behind it. It's fucking great. It, it makes me think of like a zombie movie, like that shot you'll see of zombies walking into town for yeah. dinner. Yeah. <laughs> Similar kind of vibe. So then we, we so they go to, they go to the police station and the, uh, and they're they're talking to Mooney and they're talking to Dave and they're telling Dave like oh there's pe- there's people dying cotton candy cocoons ah and they get in there and Mooney's just like are you fucking crazy he's like he's like there's no you kill the clowns what do you think you think I'm stupid <laughs> it's like let let them make a dummy out of you Dave but they're not gonna make a dummy out of me I I love it <laughs> it's for great reasons that, it's great for oh, there's so many great that. there's so many great setups and uh, uh, payoffs yes. in this movie big time. But now we get to see the clowns coming into town, like Rudy had said before, uh, with the clown walking in and and doing his like little uh, 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 animatronic impression in front of the drugstore and stuff. And we get some more clown language. He's like, ah, Bodo, or whatever the yeah. fuck he says. Well, Bobos. Why? He might say Bobos because yeah. he sees these two young women walk in and he Norm. follows them into the drugstore. Norm, Norm was there. The gnome. Yeah. Oh, I <laughs> love oh, you guys. Yeah, Norm was so, there for sure. Nice Bobos. I, 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 I'm going to take a, a little side note here to talk to the, the viewers and the listeners. I have had such a blast being here in person, although it has seemed like I have the attention span of a fly because we'll, we'll be sitting here talking and there are movies lined all, all over this place, actually. It's the video and, dungeon. And, and yeah. awesome, awesome toys and replicas and everything that I'll be in the middle of a really serious conversation and all of a sudden I'm like, is that terror vision? Oh, is that that? Is that this? And it makes me so happy to... to see things that mean so much to me uh and i think i think now is the time that i i want to maybe a- address or talk to if you listen to, listen to this podcast before you know that at the end they rate whether a movie is a shelf movie or a dumpster movie right i am so glad and i have picture proof so they can't edit this out when this airs i will post and sean you're gonna love this too okay i now have definitive proof that a shelf movie, which means they deemed it fantastic, is right here to Sean's right. If you look, that is Pluto Nash on the shelf, which means you guys deem it a good movie. We have had we have had several talks about how great this movie is, and I just saw last night that this is a shelf movie according to the Lascola household. Fuck let, you, Joe. Let me let me <laughs> let me clue you in here. We had an idea to put post a, a stack of all of the movie dumpster like season one, season two, season threes. So that is why I own that, and I did not pay for that. So how does that feel? <laughs> did you steal that one too? Yeah. No, that was I got it in like a in something else. Like a, uh, somebody was throwing away tape. So hashtag backpedal. <laughs> <laughs> hashtag that movie. Yeah, is I'm, a big, I'm a big, I'm a big, I'm a big Pluto Nash fan. Yeah. Uh, again, um, go back and check that episode out, Rudy. <laughs> so, so, uh, so Spikey 
so so we get we cut to this guy the, now the clowns are terrorizing the town we get we get uh this puppet show that spikey's doing in the middle of this fucking oh, gazebo so good and and spikey's there and he's got like two puppets and he's doing the hand puppets and one of them pulls out the cotton candy gun and zaps the other one uh this guy's like watching this show yes. and then all of a sudden it like turns the gun on him and it like rises up out of this little thing and it's this giant oh, fucking clown giant. Uh, yeah and he ends up shooting this dude with the with the with the cotton candy yeah, gun. With the, with the, I don't know how he controls the, the the trigger in the puppet and the hands. Like he, oh, because he's only got four fingers. So that's and they're super. big fat fingers too. Yeah, he's uh, really terrible at texting. Yeah, yeah, but he's very good at. Oh, so what were you gonna say? Well, they could they they can they can remove their hands, dude. So maybe they just like put another one on, like like Captain Hook or some shit. Oh, and they put oh, the fucking so... they put the puppet gun hand on. Yeah. <laughs> They could. I, I. Oh my God, that's awesome! Yeah. Imagine that fucking Smee's polishing up his killer clown hand. Here you go, Captain. <laughs> ah, Hawk. We need to cover that one. One day. Uh, but yeah, we go. We we kind of cut back and forth at this drugstore a few yeah. times. But I love this time because we have this clerk who's just like, oh, 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 oh. Uh, excuse me. Uh, uh, uh. And, and, well, and well, fucking Rudy and Shorty are like tearing up uh, the fucking drugstore, killing people. You see the yeah, cotton candy and we see bags, the cotton candy, which I love because in this in this shot. The cotton candy cocoons have the shoes the of the late, yeah, the feet sticking out of the bottom. Just so you can remember, because it's a callback yes. to when they walked into the store. Yeah. Yep. Now, here's something that I I love, and you, again, you make it makes you wonder. This clerk saw these two clowns, cotton candy eyes, or or cotton cotton, whatever the the verb of that is, turn these ladies into cotton candy. And he stayed in cotton that store. Cotton candy cocoons. Yeah. And he stayed in that store for a while. Yeah. yeah. If I saw that, I am out so fast. There's one point where he's got like a handful yeah. of shit and like one of those <laughs> propeller hats on and he just dumps everything Bugs on the Bugs Bunny floor. vitamins. <laughs> Bugs Bunny <laughs> vitamins, yeah. They're fucking with shaving cream and like powder and stuff at one point. Oh yeah, the fucking uh, shorty like it sniffs sneezes. the powder yeah. and sneezes uh. it into his face, shoots him in the face with shaving cream. Oh, so There's good. all these little like funny anecdotes and then we get scenes that are just like super like serious and scary. But Right here, we get the montage of like the pizza delivery. Pizza, the nipples, pizza. the nipples, the nipples. Yeah. <laughs> pizza, and her fucking she's she's got <laughs> them on, dude. Those the, headlights, the pepperonis. <laughs> <laughs> Shorty pops out of the fucking pizza box and zaps yeah. her. Yeah. Uh, Fatso like knocks on one door and has like a box of chocolates for this lady. He's got Valentine. And, yeah. Wait, and I love this because there and there's a bunch of little nods in this movie that lets you that lets your mind wonder. When when Fatso hands the uh, chocolate heart uh, gift to the lady, yeah. when he pulls his other hand around, it's a it's the puppet, it's the puppet gun puppet, hand, yeah. which means that before he killed this lady and her husband, I'm assuming he did that puppet bit to somebody else and got them. Well, we were talking about that before, and I was like, well, what if that's just another thing to disarm people because it's like, oh, it's a puppet with a gun, and like, oh, that's funny. Yeah, because they do a lot of stuff like that uh, throughout the film. They're non-threatening. I mean, they look like fucking monsters, but apparently, they're it's very disarming to people. I want to I want to see the scene where they found a stack of pizza boxes and one of them went in clown language wait let's cut out the bottoms and have you hop inside <laughs> like you have a gun that will kill them as soon as they open the door <laughs> you're devoting how much time to stuffing your small little friend in a stack of boxes well, like the clowns, that's yeah. why it's like the mars attacks thing <laughs> obviously came way later but you know they could just shoot people they, they like to yeah. fuck with people they it's like to mess with them it's fun so so mike has Dave drive him out to the see the tent and everything to like confirm yeah. everything. The fucking tent is gone. There's a gigantic hole in the ground. Which Dave never acknowledges. No. He's like, huh, there's no tent. He's like, no, but there's a giant it's a fucking giant hole. There's proof that something was here. But he's not a total dick because then they they go to the top of the world and everybody's cars are still there, but they've been ransacked. There's shit all over the place. Yeah. Bob McReed McReed, Bob, Mc, Bob McReed's Jeep. It's right yeah, over there. I love how it's covered in cotton candy. And again, not to yeah. keep referencing, but it looks like a spider web. Yeah, it's this great scene, though, because, again, this is one of those scary scenes where it like pulls up on the on the uh, Jeep and you see like the, yeah. the webbing and the and the light and everything shining in. Mm -hmm. And he like picks it up and it's all gross and crusty and shit. Yeah. And he's like, whatever it is, it's not fucking cotton candy. It's definitely blob like. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah, there you go. Well, and here's the other thing. Let's let's say because I had mentioned earlier, like the inconsistency of sometimes it, it there's there's remnants. Sometimes there, this feet are sticking out or whatever. In in the scenario where they cleanly capture people in the cotton candy cocoons and take them. 
when when Dave and Mike pull up to this area, there is no proof of anything weird. Just empty cars. They yeah. all could have taken a walk. Mm. But the but all at the candy, same time. I mean, an orgy. They all just went <laughs> they were somewhere. all watching each other. We already uh, confirmed that's true, that's it's true. a fucking blue Monday. All uh, right. <laughs> So having the cotton candy, which Mike had already mentioned before, mm. adds credibility to his thing when when Dave looks at it and goes, well, this looks like cotton candy. Yeah. Yeah. Well, especially like when that's the stuff. Yeah. yeah. Well, especially Dave, when he sees that the tent isn't there, he literally like coughs fucking Mike. And then he sees this car and he's like, oh, yeah. OK, now I believe yeah. you. Maybe Sorry. I made a mistake. Um, but like before they uh, go there, they actually drop Debbie off at her house. Oh, that's right. Like, Sorry. You get the reveal that her and, and Dave dated before. And there's like this really fucked up. Li- it, it's a funny line, but it's kind of fucked up where where uh, uh, Dave goes, oh, yeah, I guess she wanted uh, laughs over stability. Yeah. <laughs> and Mike's just like, oh, uh, it's like, oh, that was kind of shitty. Oh, man. <laughs> You're not my boyfriend anymore. You can't tell me what to do. He gets like pissed when they kiss as, as Mike's walking her to her door. <laughs> and it's like, all right, pal, like get over it. Uh, and, and I mentioned that specifically because it's setting up that popcorn shit. Oh, big time. Because uh, oh, she yeah, had it yeah. all over her clothes. She goes to take a shower. This is the first part of her five hour shower <laughs> that she takes. It feels like it yeah. in, the, in the timeline of the film. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. So she takes her clothes off, but there's still popcorn all over it. Uh, setting it up. Yep. Paying it off. Puts it in the hamper. Well, we get we get that montage you're talking about. Well, well Big Bad JoJo's coming into town. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the biker gang's here. Yeah. <laughs> And I love this fucking scene because you have all these bikers just, you know, mulling around and uh, Shorty comes on in, in this little tiny bike and they're just like immediately making fun of him. And this one big motherfucker slug walks up and he's like, ah, nice bike you got there. Watch this, baby. So this this is the scene that I was talking about earlier where up until this point, the clowns have been cotton candy and cocooning people. They have been... Uh, actually, I think at this point that's all they've done, but in different methods with yeah. the, the puppet. Uh, they, they shoot the popcorn once, but yeah. yeah. We know that they are the bad guys, yeah. <clears throat> but you have Shorty, which I think just instinctually we think of as a kid clown. Now, he yeah. could be an adult clown who's just a little person. He's Gary Coleman yeah. clown. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, what and, you talking about? Well, what he says in like the clown language. So I, I, I stick him out. I, I think the the fact that he pulls up on a bike with training wheels and his little bike mm. really makes you think kid clown. That he's right? a baby, yeah. And we think like, oh, that's adorable because we have. I we I don't think we've seen him do anything yet. Yeah. No, well, he's in the pizza box. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. He is yeah. in the pizza box. Um, but he's still a cute little kid just yeah. doing whatever. And slug <laughs> is a terrible person. And and makes him cry, makes Shorty cry. He fucking smashes his bike. Yeah. Picks and it up and slams it on the ground. Yeah. If you don't see this scene and think, that guy's an asshole. <laughs> oh, he's a to- he totally yeah, gets what total- he deserves. So now when Shorty does what he does. What, what are you going to do? Knock, knock my, my block, block off. off. And oh, he man. absolutely does. One of those little punching gloves that brunt, knocks him right off. It's a fucking Looney Tunes, Tex Avery yeah. ass fucking <laughs> uh, boxing glove on a fucking like spring. Yeah. <laughs> I love how he just falls in a trash can. Yeah. And the one guy's like, oh shit. <laughs> they all get out of here. <laughs> like that's that's the moment where I, I immediately think, yeah, clowns, let's get them. Uh, yeah. Well, no, I agree with you. But then we immediately, the next scene makes me think the opposite because we cut to the big top burger. Yeah. Oh, yes. But, but, oh my but, God, but, yes. Up, but up until this point, everything's been kind of goofy and yeah. weird. Now, yeah. this is the first scary scene of the movie. With and like it's gore fucking, and... Well, not even gore. It's just creepy as fuck. Yeah. All right, I give you that. Yeah, um, it, it's it's the it's the sequence where they're the 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 mom and the daughters are like eating in, inside the Big Top Burger and yeah. fucking Jumbo's outside and he's like playing like peekaboo with her and oh, shit. Yeah. The score here is is chilling and he's like coercing her to come outside. And as he's going like this, we pan back here and he has a giant he... fucking it's literally the pop. Oh, he's yeah, got a giant fucking mallet behind mm-hmm. his back and he's going to smash this little girl's fucking head in to yeah. her shoulders. That is, that is terrifying yeah. because everything that we've seen up to this point. Oh, actually no, because we saw the, the justified beheading of yeah. Slug. Yeah, but that's still like, that's it, not really scary. Some, it's still yeah. funny. Yeah. There's been some shit because it is still a horror movie, yeah. but you're yeah, right. Yeah, well, uh, yeah. he was a jerk first, but yeah, like yeah. everything has been, okay, we're putting this him in the innocent cocoons, little girl. We're fine. Yeah. 
here is a little girl that the only option with this mallet is to brain her. Yeah, not even for food. It's just killing for yeah. pleasure. <laughs> yeah, what is he gonna put the silly straw to the ground? Yeah, <laughs> It's not for food, it's for fun, yeah. right? Yeah. But I love how like the mom grabs her at the last second. Yeah. And you see his face. Like they're intimidating oh, looking, yeah. but he yeah. looks pissed. Man. And you know he killed all those people anyway off screen. So, but so Rudy had mentioned this to me and he was like, What's the deal with the 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 audio not lining up with what the mom's saying? Back here, young lady. Not oh, yeah. you're not going anywhere till you finish your food. And it's like real like, you know, uh subdued. Originally, Steven or the Kyotos wanted that to be the scare of the scene. It's this creepy ass scene. And then the mother like freaks the fuck out and screams at this little girl. And that was supposed to be the scream, but it was like too intense. Oh, wow. So they dubbed it over and changed it. Really? Yeah. Huh. That is definitely one of the more intense scenes in this film for sure. It's it's, yeah. it, it, it's it's a creepy ass scene. That and the precinct scene are my two favorites. Yes. Yeah. That's so good. Yeah. So good. So then, of course, speaking of Mooney, yeah. uh, we go to the police station and he is just like sick of people. Call Apparently he's been getting calls all night about clowns and he thinks everyone's in on a prank to fuck with him. And he's just like, ah, uh, ah, uh, clowns. Uh, what are you talking to, Terenzi brothers? He keeps hanging up on people. Just stupid stunt to sell them fucking ice cream. Uh, he literally pulls out like a magazine and a cigar and like kicks his feet up. And you just yeah. hear the phone going off he's the hook in the back. He's checked in. Yes. <laughs> Yeah. And they're like, they took your wife away in a balloon? You don't need to stop police, pal. You need a psychiatrist. I, yeah. I, I, Moni, you're an idiot. The whole town is <laughs> yeah, not in on this. I know it sounds like everybody insane. is in on it. No. Uh, so when we were watching this, uh, I had made a, a comment to Joe about uh, at the end when they use a balloon. I not jumped ahead. And I was like, I understand why I would have liked to see a scene before that shows the the balloon sure. just so that it doesn't seem like it came out of nowhere. Well, it doesn't. Well, and we hear one line from somebody over the phone saying they took my wife away in a balloon and he even repeats it. Yeah, he yeah. Re he repeats it, which when we were looking this up to find out more, cause again, we research, we come, we want to give you an informed uh, decision yes. and opinion. This is movie. Um, that's going to come into play. Later, when when we talk about that scene that uh, I I have been sitting on since oh, I found out. Yes. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I've not told Joe yet. I know what he's talking about though, so we'll, we'll okay, get. Okay. Yeah. That. Yeah. Very yeah. Excited. So we get the clown at the checkout at the fucking uh, right. at the drugstore, and he's like, yeah. and he calls, and and the 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 guy calls Mooney, and he's like, uh, uh, Kurt, I have a bit of a problem here, <laughs> and he fucking that's when he puts the shit on the counter, Mr. And Myers, like, and he's like, oh, not you too, Mr. Myers, the whole town in on this, the Terenzi brothers, everybody's getting them to buy the fucking ice cream. Can you believe it? Like the entire town is trying to gaslight Mooney this for some guy, reason. This guy's got fucking issues, man. We even had, we, we then we cut to some more montage. We got a fucking car chase. Oh man, with the one clown chasing a guy in a car. This is like Rumpel Stiltskin or fucking uh, Lubden. This was yeah. the original opening of the movie. I kind of would have loved. I mean, I like it where it is, but that would have been a lot of fun. Uh, I think I think they made the right decision sure. to put it in the yeah, montage section because if yeah. it's the opening, that means that they're already here. So seeing the shooting star later. I mean, yeah, it does relocate, but it doesn't it, it doesn't really fit there. It needs it needs the build up. Yeah. You know what I mean? You can't just I mean, even though we get it with Royal Dano, you only get bits and pieces of the clown. Right. Yeah. But this clown is driving a fake fucking car. He's got the headlights on his feet and he's like ramming this guy <laughs> off the road. So awesome good. stop motion, by the way. This is like fucking buggy the clown from one piece. I think he drives one of those. <laughs> I was waiting for you. Uh, to bring yeah. him up. I, I, if I didn't have killer clowns merch, that was going to be the other shirt option. I have a buggy the clown uh, shirt, which. Any One Piece fans, you know what I'm talking about. He's literally a dude that has a clown nose. and uh, <laughs> He's probably one of my favorite characters. Uh, he's a great character. He's hilarious. Uh, the voice actor's amazing. Excuse me for not remembering his name. But yeah, he has a red nose and he's very sensitive about it. <laughs> and I couldn't stop. I've seen this movie a million times, but I just kept thinking about it when, when the, the nose stuff comes more relevant towards the end here. So he runs him off the fucking road and this guy like dies in a oh. blaze. And sl it's slim, by the way. That's okay. The Where is he? Uh, right here. Right here. Yeah. This guy, awesome, awesome. Uh, now this was this was one of the things that I, I brought up. This is the first time I think that we see them kill not for food. Yeah. Well, yeah, it's insinuated with the little girl, but now he actually fucking yeah. knocks this guy off and kills him, and he's like, "Yeah, it was hilarious." Yeah, with that and creepy he just ass laugh. Yeah, yeah. Which, oh man, I, that that makes me want to ask so many questions. Like, so do some of them hunt for sport? I don't know about sport. I think they're just fucked up. Like they're sadistic, creepy killer clowns. Wait, oh, <laughs> serial I, killer I clowns. love that. Just being serial killers isn't isn't <laughs> like that's 
that doesn't make it hunting for sport. They're not that messed up. No. But humans hunt for sport. Does that mean <laughs> as a species, we are worse than killer clowns from outer space? I, yeah. You might be on to something. Yeah, I, think, I don't I know. I think you're right. I think, you, I think you're right. So this is the this is where we get to the popcorn being on the on the clothes mm-hmm. and this back and forth between scenes because we go back to the big top burger and we see fucking uh, Jumbo like sprinkling this popcorn into the dumpster. Yep, <laughs> this and, poor bastard and, working there. And that's intercut with Suzanne Snyder taking mm-hmm. a shower. She puts her fucking popcorn covered clothes in the hamper. Right now, something hatches or whatever in this fucking dumpster and eats this fucking guy. <laughs> that this 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 big top burger employee yeah, some kind of well we we find out shortly what it is some something involving popcorn eats him yeah yeah or yeah, the yeah. blob i don't know could be yeah. the fucking well, blob it's, a, it's, it's an it's an unseen creature so uh, far sure so then they're like kind of uh mike and dave are kind of rushing back to deb's yeah and, and dave wants to fucking like send the glasses off to get it like analyzed like the cotton candy shit <laughs> which is pretty great <laughs> yeah but I, I love this scene because they they come across some clowns or a clown rather doing a fucking puppet show it's, to some people at a bus stop it's fucking slim and it's I great this. because the, this bus drives by and he just like appears and mike's like oh we need to do something and dave's like all right yeah well, i, I kind of want to watch this first and first you know it does like a rabbit it does an elephant and all the people Woo, wow what? this is great <laughs> an elephant but it's like this like picturesque perfect elephant silhouette so they're watching this shit, and then uh, you know the clown. You know it's, it actually turns one of the uh, the shadows is like a woman dancing. Yeah, like a harem dancer. Uh, and then finally you get the you know, the payoff. <laughs> no, but but you missed the part where they where it's it's fucking Washington sailing the oh, Delaware. And I love <laughs> I that. love that the way they're doing it is just like tapping fingers. Yeah. Like I don't <laughs> I don't understand the the logic of the magic or the science or however they're doing. And the the one shadow has a a gro- a glowing red eye. <laughs> the the, the, the like, dino. Uh, the, yeah. The Tyrannosaurus. They're killer clowns from outer space. They're aliens. They have maybe they have a magic. Yeah. You don't know. I, I, That's I not magic it. to them. That's yeah. just part of them. That's part of their na- supernatural being. Because Mike even says that later, which I mean, Mike, Captain Obvious, hello. Well. But he's like, Yeah, I think they just they're aliens from another planet that just happen to look like and act like clowns. And Dave's like, huh. Yeah, no shit. Well, we'll we'll get there. Uh, yeah. But it's great because Slim makes the fucking T-Rex and like scoops everybody. And yeah. makes them small and then like puts them in his fucking popcorn bag. See, uh, and it's great. This when I was when I was younger, I interpreted that as he he captured them and put them in the bag, maybe making them popcorn oh, or could have. Like, or I, like I didn't feeding know. the popcorn, seasoning the popcorn Ooh, with people. I like the idea the, the thought of feeding the popcorn. Oh, yeah. Because that that's gonna play into a, a theory or or I don't know if it's actually even canon or or how like Oh, there's so much. Yeah. Ah, I love it. I love I love how Mike and Dave roll up. And Mike has been trying to convince yeah. Dave <laughs> that killer clowns exist. And Mike goes, holy shit. And <laughs> Dave goes, believe it. And I'm like, this fucking guy's telling this guy. I love how uh, Mike just like sticks his foot on the pedal, even though he's in the passenger seat. And Dave's like, whoa, Mike, get Mike. him. <laughs> and like they try to hit this clown, but it right jumps a like wall. a thousand feet oh, in the my air. God. And, and like that's another, like that's a power that we never explore again. And it's like, mm, yeah, oh my, like. What is the limits of these things? They're super strong. They can jump right into the fucking sky. I love the the idea. The mystery I, around that yeah. surrounds them is one of the best parts of the film. See, and and we had this talk earlier where I I said they they've been talking about doing a Killer Clowns from Outer Space two or uh, a yeah. mini series or whatever for the longest time, yeah. which is and I think happening. I I believe Netflix. It's going to be through Netflix. That, that's what I heard. Sign me up. I yeah. I want to know more about where they are. Like I have questions. They seem to know a lot about Earth. I mean, they know about Washington crossing the Delaware. Yeah. I doubt on this trip somebody went to the library to go, well, how can we catch these mm. people off guard? And are and, they like the predators? They come back, they throw Danny Glover yeah, the fucking Revolutionary <laughs> War uh, uh, musket. I, I was gonna say, I think that this movie, honestly, I don't know, takes place in the fucking movie dumpster universe. Oh, straight 100%. up, oh, there is yeah. definitely a clown planet, just like the Daniel Ball one and Daniel Stern planets. There's a clown oh, yeah. planet. Yo, well, there's obviously there's clearly. A clown oh yeah, yeah. Planet. Like, but, but they're like ancient be? aliens, dude. They yeah. they they're aware of our idea of clowns come from. That's yeah. what they suggest in the movie, which I love. And I want to see that explained and go into, especially because of some of the things that that we're going to talk about in a little bit, or the other powers that they have. Yeah. How how does how does shadows convert into being in their actual hand if there isn't that like uh, is is it magic and really if there's just one line that goes well we're 
We're ancient wizards that can do this. All right, I'll buy it. I'm here for it. Dear Kyoto Brothers, don't explain any of this. Do not listen to Rudy. <laughs> I don't want to fucking see that. Just make a cool fucking great movie like you did. If you're going to just do it again. Just make this again with fun things. I don't want to know. You can explain it a little bit, but don't go overboard, please. I kind of want to see that clown planet. I'm not going to lie, but <laughs> otherwise I agree with you, Joe. Yes, that's fine. I'll, I'll see the clown planet. But like, again, you can do that without revealing all the secrets. Uh, yeah. All right. All right. So that I don't need Killer Clowns Begins. You know what I'm saying? Well, or or, or Killer Clowns Origins. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. So then, you know, Mike, he gets out of his car because he hears the Terenzi brothers down the street and he's like, oh, I'm going to get with them. and We're going to go ahead. Dave, you get back to the station. We're going to get on their fucking stupid loudspeaker and yeah. scream at them like we do every night and tell them that killer clowns are attacking. L like the fucking yeah. Blues Brothers. Like, something. Nobody's going to listen. So he, Mike tries to convince them and they're like, what are you crazy? This is like Hidden Lake. He's like, it's not Hidden Lake. We got to go save Debbie. And he's like, he's like, we're not giving you a ride to Debbie. He's like, but she's got a be two beautiful roommates <laughs> with, with, giant big, boobs. with big boobs. So easily swayed. Do they like ice cream? They love it. <laughs> okay. What are you waiting for? <laughs> Yeah. They, they are great characters. Oh, I great. mean, they're horn dogs, but they're great. So Mooney's still getting all these fucking calls yeah. from all the people around town. And, you know, this is that scene where you get, he's like, I made it to Korea. I can make it to oh, this shit. Yeah, yeah. And a fucking kill. Jumbo walks into the to the precinct. And then, whoop the goddamn to do. What do we have here? Yeah. And he gives him flowers and, like, sprays him in the face with fucking uh, the, the water, water flowers. Yeah. And he is not happy about no, that. No, no, no. Nope. Because you don't make a fool out of him. No, he no. said he threatens to shoot him right, yeah. right then and there. <laughs> but he ends up cuffing him, and he and he rips his fucking hands off. Yep, I love that. But I love it because <laughs> the clown still has his fucking hands behind his back. I love how it like creeps into another room to well, make to, him follow him. Well, yeah, to, well to go into be locked the yeah, lockup, yeah, yeah. the jail because he, he he doesn't want to not it doesn't want to disobey a lawful order. That's right. right? Or at least play along long yeah. enough. Well, he goes into the, the jail cells and those guys that got arrested earlier are like, well, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. He's like, yeah, here's your new bunk mate. P Peter and Rob are in there yeah. still. Um, and uh, and he's like, get in there. And he, he, or he's like, put your hands yeah, yeah, up. Put your and hands up. <laughs> and he holds up just the nubs with no hands and then they pop into place. Uh, That's why I'm convinced that that other hand was interchangeable with the puppet gun yeah. hand. Yeah. Makes so sense. So he goes in there and Mooney's got to fucking shine him on because he takes his fucking uh, yeah. nightstick out and fucking hits him in the back of the head. The whole fucking clown head turns around and so, he shits his pants. Yeah. So I want to I talk about that. Like, okay, for Mooney to see a clown walk in, looking at this thing's face, yeah. that is clearly- Not a clown. Not, yeah, that is it's a not monster. a human. That is something else. And it, it's blinking and it, it's uh, reactive. It's- now, when you crack him over the back of the head and it rotates 360 <laughs> degrees or 180, it goes like all the way around. Like an owl. 180 and just looks at you and he goes, and like, not, not, oh shit. I would have been out of that door so fast. I'm surprised he didn't have a heart attack right, right? then and there. Yeah. Like, how many signs do you need that? Something wrong. might be going Something's on. wrong. I, I mean, yeah. honestly, like uh, Dave calls him at one point before this and is like, you got to yeah. believe me. You got to call the state police. And he's like, screw off. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> you, you're trying to break me down. Drive me out of the force. Yeah. Oh, fuck you. <laughs> but you're right, Rudy. He should have booked it because like he stands there a little too long and gets like the, the clown pulls out like a fucking giant party uh, horn. Party blower. Yeah, party dude. blower. It's so cool because it's like this Tim Burton ass fucking yeah. thing where it like unfurls yeah. and like chokes him, grabs yeah. him and then smashes him against the bars. It's great. Yeah. Right? And then the best line. <laughs> so the two guys that have already been locked up look at the clown and go, so what are you in for? <laughs> you just watched him kill a cop. Shut up. Yeah. Get out of there. Yeah. They should have yeah, because yeah, right? they get turned into some <laughs> cotton candy as we find oh, out. Oh, dude, they get fucking cotton candy like to the wall. Yeah. They look like those fucking moths that you see in the corner of your garage. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. What are you in for? So so this is the this is the the second my second favorite scene in the movie, and it is the other really creepy scene because Mike gets into or excuse me, Dave gets into the precinct. Yes. Yeah. And nobody's there. All the lights and are off. All the lights are off. It's really it, it's almost lit like a Joe Dante scene. Mm. Um and without the sands, the blind, yeah. the blind, the, the Venetian blind thing that he does, but the lighting is similar. Sure. And uh, there's these giant multicolored footprints leading into the jail cell. And then there's just footprints all over the fucking jail cell itself. And it's dead quiet. The music's like really fucking creepy. 
And he goes into the, this, the cell and he sees the two guys that are all cotton candied up. Yep. Now, this is the first time he's seen yeah, the somebody, cocoons. the actual cocoon. He's only True. seen the, the shit on the glasses. This is the first time he's actually seen this. He pulls it off and sees the dude's face. Yeah. And this fucking arm like drops <laughs> out like this gross ass, like, like gooey, like yeah. the dissolving arm, yep. like hits him in the face and he like freaks out. He goes to walk out. And in the background, Jumbo is sitting at a desk. No, all right, hold on. I want to touch base on something here. Oh, go ahead. Because, so it, if we assume that once the party blower or whatever it's called grabbed and, and slammed Mooney's head against the 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 jail cell, cell door, yeah. the yeah, cell yeah, door yeah. that that killed Mooney. Yeah. Then he kills the other two by putting them in the cotton candy cocoon. Yeah. That means all of the footprints and the waiting for what, what he's about, about to do that was all done afterwards, just as like a psychological thing for whoever walked in. So there's got to be some thought, some some uh, purpose behind what they're doing to have a communication or to to say what he's going to say the way that he says it to just instill fear. Because the clowns, that's why. And it's it's yeah. a, it's a me. And when you think of it like that, it's so much more creepy. Yeah. Oh, big time, big time. Well, they they're sadistic, and you yeah. know that they, they they deliberately fuck with people. And again, like even the seducing, trying to seduce a little girl to come out the yeah. fucking bopper. I mean, this this scene here, you kind of get confirmation that yeah, they're killing yeah. people for you know, I guess for food or whatever, but also just because. Well, he's getting him back for fucking hitting Mooney, hitting Mooney, yeah. hitting him with the fucking nightstick. So 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 Dave walks out and he and he catches it in his periphery and he turns around and this fucking clown turns around and pulls up John Vernon like a fucking dummy. There's like blood running out of his mouth and he's got like Little rosy rosy blood cheeks. It's great. And I think about that sometimes of Jumbo just like sticking his finger in the blood and like sticking it <laughs> on his face and like making the little circles. But he talks to Dave and he's like, hey, hey Dave, who was that girl I saw you with last night? That, that smile that he does. <laughs> and he looks at him. It's creepy. It's the best. And then he fucking leans in like real, like slow. And he's like, don't worry, Dave. All we want to do is kill you. That yeah. is fucking bone that's, chilling. That's it's a, It's so fucking great. Again, in the middle of this goofy fucking movie called Killer Clowns yeah. Matter Space, we have this like expertly done creepy scene that's totally effective. And and knowing the, the ventriloquism act or yeah. however they do it, the fact that they're communicating in English. Yes. There is no way that within the few hours that they have land landed, they have learned all of the English language and what words mean and how to do it. This cannot be the first time they have been here. Maybe, but they've also figured out nuclear fusion and <laughs> space travel. True. Yeah. I, I like what Joe was saying earlier. I think it's just they, they were here before and that's where we got all our popcorn and cotton candy yeah. ideas, ideas and clown from, ideas. Yeah, yeah. Why you would turn that into something funny, I don't I know. I mean, I wonder, they have to be aligned with Pennywise. Oh, big time. I mean, they're his minions. <laughs> He's the leader of Clown God. World, I think. <laughs> yeah. So to even like extend how bone chilling the scene is, it just like throws Mooney down like garbage and yeah. just starts yeah. fucking throwing the desks out of its way. And again, yeah. this shows how strong the clowns to are. just move it with one just hand that entire throws desk it out, out of the way. way. Yeah. And this is when Dave just starts unloading with the service pistol and you finally find a fucking weakness to these things. Because the first few shots, I nothing. Love, like no, zombies. I this thing's love. like right up on him. If you hit him in the chest, it doesn't do shit. No, no blood. No, no. no it, it almost looks like he's shooting like, like a powder. Or yeah, something. yeah, like, yeah. Nothing's there. Which is strange because they're not like, they don't have goo inside them. They don't have like, yeah. like, like, the biology, I don't, and again, I don't want to know about the biology of the killer clowns. I don't give a fuck. I, I just do. think it's I interesting. Do. Make that movie, no. make a book, give no. me everything. No. I want it all. No. I want it all. I was going to say, obviously, their entire, all of their skin is like this, like, white, white. So maybe, like, it's almost like a powder when it, when you get shot, just, just to go with the clown shit. It, it's kind of cool. But then he finally decides to shoot it in the face, and he yeah. blows its fucking nose off. And this thing's like, oh! And it starts spinning <laughs> around and it's so fucking man. I remember I seeing this it. as a kid and it like blowing my mind because like it's like it's it actually like the color of Rudy's hair. Actually, it, it's like spinning. It's like spinning in this like uh, uh, sparkly green emerald uh, uh, top. Mm. And then it fucking explodes into yeah. glitter and confetti. I love that that explosion doesn't damage anything in that office. No, because I feel like it's just it was just like a big pop. Like it wasn't like an actual explosion. Does that right. make sense? All right, I can, I'll buy that. Does that make sense? 
Uh, I it's think, like if you shoot a party popper at somebody, yeah. I think, and yeah. all the shit like flies all over, I but it's not an actual explosion. Kyoto Brothers should make a movie that explains why that. Oh happens. my fucking god! <laughs> no. So then we finally get the uh, the the finish on this popcorn Deb scenario. Well, Dave calls for reinforcements, so there's people. coming. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like when he called the for state police earlier, Mooney blows him off, but he hears in the background after he kills the clown, like, "Ah, yeah. state police, state police." Yeah, but instead of being like, they're like, they're like, we got some reports of cir- circus clowns, and he's like, "Yes, there are clowns, and they are killing people." But then he goes to say, they're, "But they're not clowns; they're aliens from outer space." And I'm like, "Fucking Dave, just fucking uh, get shut yeah. up and just get them there." I love how they like leave a pause in to make like us like the audience like think yeah. oh fuck he blew it and then yeah. the guy's like all right dave yeah we're sending in the in the, in the forces <laughs> yeah she, we sure are uh, you you also got those little green monsters that multiply with water over there too uh, <laughs> okay but yeah then then we cut to deb getting out of the shower she's fully clothed now and we've up to this point we've seen these the, the, the hamper fucking bouncing around we don't know yes. why yet yeah uh, we saw that guy get killed in the dumpster and then we get the clown babies here so and this that's what they're called. Things. Yeah, they're they're the baby clowns. Now it's like I, an umbilical cord with a fucking clown head with a mouthful of sharp teeth. Up up until earlier today, I have just always assumed that was another weapon they, weapon they had. That's what I thought. Like maybe like hunting dogs or or like the falcons that people use for, yeah. for sure. Um, upon further research, they are baby clowns. So, so we were talking about this before, and mm-hmm. you were like, "Well, what about the re- the reproduction of the clowns themselves?" So, like, they make themselves via the popcorn, and you mentioned like the idea. So, yeah. yeah. So, the idea, uh, what popped in my head is fish. Yeah. Female fish lay a a batch of eggs, and then the male fish come by and bukkake them. Right. Which means fertilize them. Yeah, you call it what you like. <laughs> which means that popcorn gun. Has a completely different take now. <laughs> I love this is processing in his. Did they get this technology from Cumdor? Yep. Maybe. I John, think oh, John so. Hurt definitely hooked him and up. And that also explains why popcorn is so salty. I do love well, that, popcorn. Well, that's but, what it is. You get you get the you get the girl clown eggs, which the I guess just popcorn falls out of whatever fucking orifice they have, mm-hmm. and then you get that fucking all different kinds. You get that Mrs. Dash fucking you know onion yep. onion powder, love, little fucking yeah. nacho cheese, caramel, whatever you well, want. You on there. season the eggs yeah, a little, you season them up, and, and then they and grow then you eat them. them. Yeah, and then you eat them. Yeah, and imagine and, eating the fucking. Po- that, now let's put that in the sequel. Okay, that's Someone what eating it. That's got to be in the sequel. <laughs> you got to have them eating this fucking popcorn, and then it bursts yeah. out of their fucking. That well, would be amazing. Just like Alien. Fuck it. Who cares? It would Listen, be a great visual. But if like a bunch of them, yeah. not CGI, I know you're not going to do that. Yeah, Kyoto's. no. It's all got to be practical. I, I love your practical effects. The Kyoto's are going to do it practically. But speaking that. about these clown babies, yeah, they're coming out of the hamper. Somehow one of them gets like behind, like, you know, in the medicine cabinet behind the glass. One's in the yeah. fucking toilet. Oh my God. It's huge one. Like you a think snake. she had like a piece stuck to her ass and she was like taking a shit or something? <laughs> <laughs> and it got yeah. dropped yeah. in there. Like maybe, maybe. she did eat uh, some. Maybe uh, she shat it out. It maybe went oh, through her real quick. You ever, you ever, you know, like when you swallow corn and yeah. it still comes out corn. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Eat some popcorn. It wasn't fully popped. It still comes out as the popcorn. It's exactly, exactly, Rudy. But she, she like grabs the fucking shower head and shoves it in the one's mouth and yeah. then fucking runs out of the room. And I love yeah, who how, knew their weakness was water. Well, the clowns are like surrounding just the like, fucking yeah. house. At this yeah, point. just like that M Night Shyamalan movie. Yeah. <laughs> Oh God! Uh, and you you were mentioned the this is the scene where they're outside uh, yes. outside of the house. Well, first on oh, the do door it sounds like Mike, and yeah. she's like, oh. "Debbie, it's Mike, let me in." And she opens the door, and it's Slim in, and then he's like, "Debbie, Debbie, Debbie, uh, Debbie." I love that. It's great. So she goes to jump out the fucking window, and they're all out there with a the trampoline, like waiting to catch with her. With their fucking little rascals, yeah. like fire hats on and shit. I love it's great because it. they're clowns. Because they're clowns, that's why. But, so, she, but she gets grabbed. Well, and that goes back to the deleted scene yeah. of when she oh, was grabbed crap. as a kid. That's why she, I, I want to say that's why she was she was freaking out so much. But really, I'd be freaking well, out anyway as well. Sure, but it's like, it adds to that character. Yeah. Well, because like probably, it's all happening all over again because it picks her up and like throws her on yeah. the couch. Right, probably like literally triggered her and then in she that gets, context. And then she gets surrounded by clowns and then uh, Slim puts her in a fucking giant bubble. Yeah, yeah no, no <laughs> or a balloon that time. So, no, well, so here's that's for later, saving her for later. Later. Originally, when when I uh, had seen this and I was I was kind of dissecting it to see like how good this movie really was, I remember thinking like, man, that is just a cop out. We we need the danger of capturing a main character, but in a way that we can uh, save them at the end. Yeah, well, damsel in distress. I yeah. would agree, actually. And so because of the line of the other wife being captured by a balloon, there is a theory that. 
the the women are captured in the balloons to be turned into female clowns as sex slaves for the thing, which which is why. Oh, and because they're not the we're here to kill you, killer clowns. When uh, when Daisy and Rosebud, which are the female clowns, find the the brothers, they smother them with kisses. They don't try to kill them because their purpose is to reproduce or or at least to to satisfy. Okay, well uh, that kind of that breaks the popcorn theory because like now we're not actually having intercourse, but they are having intercourse in in I, I, unless they. Unless they create the eggs, and well, no, because the popcorn when we when we first see Rudy in the uh, cotton candy cocoon area, there's a big thing yeah. of no, I don't know where it comes where where it comes from or, or how where the popcorn originates from. So maybe it's not for reproduction purposes; it's just for pleasure, pleasure purposes. That's like some leprechaun ass <laughs> shit because Loveden does it in the second movie. Yeah. yeah, he 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 goes to he, he goes to Bridget and he's like, "Oh, you're beautiful, but now I'm gonna fucking make you ugly because the little ones won't suckle." Yeah, <laughs> so it's like that kind of thing with the clowns, right? They're like, "We got to make you fucking ugly because I can't get my clown dick hard yeah, or yeah. something." Like, yeah, let, let me listen. Any chance I get to turn a regular human woman into a clown woman, I take as well but so they're clown I'm, monsters listen monsters right? need it's not to, just it's not just painted to, faces they are uh, fucking deformed aliens well, that's why they mutate the women into their into their species maybe they clowns. eat the maybe they eat the popcorn uh or you know what they, they suck up that fucking cotton candy juice maybe that oh, turns yeah. it into it too yeah that could do oh yeah maybe i could i could see that but yeah so hearing that theory and then the other line of uh the guy's wife being taken not turned into the cocoon kind of makes you think like all right well what is the purpose because aside from that one scene where we see the girl clowns we don't see any other girl clowns no and i think like obviously it's just there for comedic effect sure <laughs> but i, I think I it's there saying, as though, yeah. lore i think yeah. it is canon <laughs> again kyoto's i don't want any of this confirmed or denied it just we're just I'm, having fun with it. That's what we're supposed to be doing. Nope, nope, I, nope I want it all. I, I yeah. like the theories, Rudy, but I'm going to be that guy, even though I love this fucking movie. It is literally so this character doesn't die because every <laughs> other character that's on screen is putting this goddamn cotton candy and it killed immediately. Well, no, the, the other thing is it's set up already. Mooney gets the fucking call from the guy who says they took my no, wife yeah, away yeah. in a balloon. See? And, and I'm saying Mooney goes, screen. they took your wife away in a balloon. So yeah. it's like, okay, yeah, they it do works. that. Yeah. It works. And there's multiple balloons that we see mm. yeah, later. throughout the thing. And, and they just leave those fuckers to die. But well, anyway. Yeah. Uh, so so we, we, we see. Well, well they got to leave. Well, the Terenzi brothers are with Mike and they and yeah. they go to Debbie's house and they see Slim putting getting in the car yeah. and then, then this is the car chase. In the, the clown car. The clown car chase with the ice cream truck and the fucking cop car. Right. And that's what that's how we get to their new location. Because yes. they left yeah. the woods and now they're they've they've made base at a fucking like the Lost Boys Seaside Carnival yes. fucking town. Yeah. I think the Joker's in there somewhere yeah. fucking with the, you know, the Phantasm. Oh, oh, big time, maybe. Because they have been to Earth before and know that a big top can hide in this amusement park. In plain park. sight. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know, from all of their, I mean, Kyoto Brothers, you can ma you can back me up here. <laughs> wait, right? Okay, wait. <laughs> About to pop this bubble. The Night Watchman didn't see this fucking <laughs> oh, giant God. Uh, big top spaceship land in the fucking carnival parking lot behind the fun house. Or even let's say he was on a bathroom break and didn't see it. <laughs> when you walk back out and there is a giant glowing circus tent, yeah. you don't go, ah, oh, that wasn't there before. Uh, whatever. Yeah. I'm just going to eat my peanut butter and jelly sandwich. This is my favorite scene. Yes. That's why I have the damn t-shirt. The yes. second that Cavity <laughs> Colors so put it out, good. I bought it. By the way, Cavity Colors, if you want to get in contact with us, again, moviedumpsterpodcast at gmail.com. We'd love to uh, promote your stuff. Oh, absolutely. Same. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but yeah, we have the security guard, and he's out there uh, being oblivious, as you guys just talked about. But the clown car fucking pulls up. Because uh, at some point, the Terenzi brothers, you know, they see the, the sirens going and they just assume they're going to get pulled over and Dave yeah. kind of rear ends. Them. Oh, yeah, yeah. They end up all getting in the Terenzi brothers truck. Yes. Which there's a good joke where one of them has like their license down. And is like, I need, oh, I'm sorry. And he's, like, he's like, oh, you know, sorry. I was, I was feeling a bit queasy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Mike's just like, shut the fuck up. Get out of here. M meanwhile, they weren't even in the driver's side. I would have been I would have been like, there was a guy that stole this <laughs> and just ran away. Uh, you can find him that way. He's yay tall. Yeah. And. It's a like, rental, though, Rudy. I, I, oh. uh, 
So anyways, yeah, yeah. So the security guard sees them all piling out of the clown car and we get the theme again as oh, like five of them come it, out. It's so good. good. And then I, pointing at it. This is one right here. I got you. <laughs> now this creates, I'm going to argue a plot hole at the end of the movie, but well, whatever. But don't you dare. You're going to shoot down my popcorn sex slave clown. <laughs> oh, hold on, I'm... Uh, but anyway, yeah, they throw the fucking pies at him and he gets pelted and he gets hit with these, I guess, acid pies and turns into what's on this T-shirt, a fucking Sunday of, of blood and guts. I, I love there's something so satisfying about the scene between the sound effects and the close ups of the yeah. fucking pie, like yeah. smacking this dude like all over him. I think of the and three stooges immediately. I love that I love the it. first one almost completely misses him. Oh, knocks his fucking hat off. Yeah. Yeah. And then, of course, after they all all said and done, Shorty comes over with the comically huge cherry to put on top. Hmm. And then the fucking they they catch up the Terenzis, uh, Mike and Dave, and fucking the Terenzis are like our right, ice cream, huh? Yo, it's not. Yeah, I'm like, Ugh, I w they you see the want, fucking skeletal he, hand. He's got it on his fingers. Like, yeah. Oh yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Rich, rich, like his fucking fingers should be melted off. Whatever. Well, well, okay. So let's put it in perspective here. Maybe it there needs to be a certain amount of the pie on you for it to start dissolving. It. Sure. Or, or maybe it's just a time thing. Um, no, nah, because I feel like he, the the security guard, kind of got affected quickly. Is it? Is or it? Or maybe filling? it's the filling. Is inside. it the filling? That makes or sense. is it the? Or is it the frosting? Well, you filling. know what's funny? We're we're Not gonna the frosting the whipped cream. Yeah. We're gonna figure out what justifies. Um. The, the brother not getting burned, and then we're going to shit on that explanation <laughs> in about 20 minutes. I love this because the the tent is behind a funhouse. Yeah. So when they go into the funhouse, you never know when the funhouse ends and the ship begins. Yeah. Far. And I love all the giant cutouts that they have. And mm -hmm. they do some really, really excellent force perspective stuff in these yeah. scenes. The whole movie, honestly. I, well, yeah, the whole movie, but oh, like especially yeah. towards the end here. And there, there's such a good deleted it's, scene it's that these, has that as well. Yeah, there's these giant uh, uh, Dinosaurs. Cut, cutouts, but I think they're all... Um, I don't know who did it exactly. I mean, I don't know which Kyoto brother, but I want to say Charlie might have done these because it looks like his designs, okay. like his, the way he draws and stuff. Uh, but they're these big airbrushed monsters in this place, and they're all walking through, and this is where they have their hypothesis about yeah. what the clowns are, why they're here, and all that kind of stuff. And it's and they've confirmed that it's kind of all of these things, you know. It, it, are they uh, aliens from another planet that their planet died? Uh, you know, uh, are they you know, picking us up to do experiments on us or something like that. Or are they just here for a bite to eat? Or were they cruising through the galaxy and stopped here for a bite to eat, man? And I think it's all of those things. Yeah. Uh, so they start moving through this fucking place and they're like, you know, stay close. Stay <laughs> absolutely close. <laughs> <laughs> he, they, he, they fucking, again, the Terenzi brothers, big giant red button. They press it and it fucking shoots this uh, like air gun up <laughs> Mike's ass. So then Mike's like, yeah, don't touch anything. They're like, yeah, don't worry about it. I, five, didn't, I didn't touch anything. <laughs> fucking five seconds later. As they get to this doorway, the Terenzi brothers just get dropped through a trap door into a ball pit. Oh, man. They go into Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, where uh, then they meet the... Uh, Daisy and Rosebud. And I love... Which, I don't know which one's which, but one of them, I guess they got balloon tits because they are just expanding <laughs> yeah. for like a solid six seconds. Are you Debbie's roommates? <laughs> uh, Joe and I had a, a conversation earlier when we were watching of if we were stuck in this position... <laughs> yeah. Which which clown girl would we have picked? Um, which one did you would you pick? Gun to my head kind of thing. Come on, it, yeah, you're yeah. a Terenzi brother. You're ready to fuck. I mean, if I'm one of the Terenzis, I'm going for the one with the giant expanding boobs. So oh, that seems to be their the thing. thing. Yeah. That's the right one. We're we're the left. We're yeah. We I cake. I really like the, the dyed red, red hair. <laughs> Um, because I, I really like colored hair. Uh, and the other one looks more like with the frizzy hair. Not yeah. really. That looks more like a woman that would talk to me in real life. So <laughs> not I'm not even frizzy. <laughs> just like like weird raggedy and kind of like bag lady looking. I'll be perfectly honest. I've seen this movie many times. And honest, I remember the scene, but I, I really can't even picture what the, the difference other than the giant boobs. Yeah, yeah, I was a fucked up kid. So like oh, yeah, I had yeah. Jessica Rabbit. I had the fucking clown tits. Yeah. Oh, man. Lock Bugs the door. Mom, drag don't come in. me for a little bit, too. <laughs> and, um, mm, there's <laughs> something about male animals in dresses that gets my motor revving. I mean, you want to fuck a clown, fuck a clown. Mm. 
You wanna? A wise oh. man once said, "You wanna fuck a puppet? Fuck a puppet." And they're half puppet. So that's oh, actually, uh, there it is... might have been me. I don't know. I, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> no uh, name there, norm, folks. There is a clown from from Washington that I am in love with, uh, Blueberry. If you are watching, get down here quickly because we gotta we gotta make this happen. <laughs> is she half puppet? No, no, she is 100 percent clown, baby. Uh, mm, uh, check Rudy's uh, links in, in the description. <laughs> There won't be uh, links to any of his <laughs> sites, of his websites. So then we go back into this uh, cotton candy storage uh, area because, you know, Dave and Mike are trying to find Debbie. It's completely it's full. They're like, forget the Terenzis. They're fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They just disappeared in this fucking spaceship, whatever. Fuck them. They always he land on their feet. Th- they uh, do that all the time. They do not fall through a trap door in an alien spaceship pir- piloted by clowns all of the time. They are in danger. They always land on their feet. Right? Yeah. As they fall into the ball pit on their asses. <laughs> Uh, uh, but yeah, so they, the cotton candy room is full. Oh, it's full. To yeah. And now they're like, now. Jesus Christ, someone's got the whole town. Oh, we missed the part where. Uh, oh, yeah, yeah, the yeah. Parade. The, the street sweep. The parade is great because they oh got this God, giant yes. fucking vacuum and they're just zapping all those stragglers and they're sucking them up in this fucking yeah, vacuum. This one guy's a fucking idiot. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, this one dude's an idiot because, like, I get you're just trying to get one additional kill on screen for the sake yeah. of the movie, but, like, you should have just stayed under that car, pal. This one guy's, like, hiding under a car. One clown passes him. There's still, like, 10 walking and he's like, yeah. boom, yeah. gets zapped at me. He's like, buddy. He didn't hang out like under there. trying to tiptoe no. away. Or, like, running, you get that... Yeah. Which uh, immediately alerted the other clown who who shot him. So uh, It is a great scene, though. Rudy noticed this. I just want to say shout out to Chris Farley clown driving the fucking... <laughs> driving the machine. Yes. Did he drop any banana peels while he was in I there? I don't think so. Uh, I'm driving a clown van down <laughs> by the river. Oh, my God. God damn little banana, little snack. Fat uh, clown in a skinny coat. Oh my God. <laughs> so back at the I, cotton candy chamber, yeah. they're they're looking for Debbie. They're trying yeah. to find the balloon she's in. But before they can, they hear uh, uh, Fat, Jumbo walking. Fatso. Oh, fa- uh, they hear, uh, Fatso Fat- and Jumbo are two yeah. different movies. Oh, okay. I assume there was, again, there's a lot of names here. I, wow. I know some of them. Sean, not all fat Fatso. people are the same. These are clowns, Rudy. <laughs> the alien is- clowns. <laughs> Uh, he walks in and they kind of hide behind the cotton candy and this thing walks up with the silly straw. Dude, this gigantic ass fucking crazy oh, straw. I so love good. that straw so much. It's, it sucks I, the blood out of somebody. Yeah, it sticks him right into one of those cotton candy. He gets a little sip, gets a little drink. Uh, kind of love it. Uh, get, I lo- this, get that this, spider motif. This slow pan up on Fatso and like mm. his lips are going... And they're like sucking the fucking straw. It's gross. It's Essentially awesome. turning people into sun kiss pouches. Uh, like, yeah. I'm I'm down. It's oh Capri God. Suns. Dude, yeah. So he fucking shambles off back to wherever he came from. And then they finally find the balloon. Now there's a ton of these balloons and I understand for plot and you don't need to add a bunch of extra characters at this point well, in the movie. Well, Dave, uh, uh, Mike knew what color it was. Yellow, And they right. could see inside. To be All fair. these other people, help us, yeah. get us the fuck out of here. <laughs> nah, nah, we're looking for Debbie. Where's fuck, Debbie? Fuck Debbie em. Stone. Fuck him. They find her, of course, and they uh, they're trying to break her out. And and Dave pulls out the pistol, and he's like, Mike's like, whoa, 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 whoa. And he's like, ah, don't worry about it. Boom. Of course, yeah. it works immediately. But <laughs> which I I want to see the scene where the where he doesn't have the revolver and he, he uses the shotgun and just <laughs> destroys Debbie, <laughs> just cuts her right in half. They're like, oh my god, those balloons must kill people when they put them in there. Like, no, Dave, she was fine a second ago. Uh, yeah. So yeah, they get her out of the balloon and they and they go to get out of the place. And Mike's like, no, we can't go back that way. We gotta go this way. So they go deeper into the ship. Right. And they're running away. They're going through all these different hallways and stuff, like you said before, with the fucking, oh, yeah. the moving the things moving that laugh. Frames. And, and the clowns are after him at this point, yeah. by the way. They come in and they, and they yeah, get him. They hear the gunshot. Because firing a gunshot, <laughs> or firing a gun in a ship is a surefire way to let people know where exactly yeah, you are. Especially this massive chamber that's, the only dampening is these cotton candy uh, <laughs> <Yeah>. cocoons. <laughs> so th- they go down this pole and, does and it still work? Does this pole still work? It does, of course. Yes. They go down the pole and uh, Dave stops. And he's like, why'd you guys all stop? And they look down and there's like this fucking, I don't know what, this worm like coming up. Oh, and that, my God. that looks like some fucking, that thing from Toys. Yes. Yeah. I was thinking Half-Life oh, 2. Yeah. yeah uh, but I, I kind couldn't of put reverse. my finger on it exactly, but I was like, yeah. that looks like something that I've seen before. Big ass thing with a mouth that's going to eat you if you don't. Does that pole go through all the way through it? That's like out its ass? I was thinking. Or maybe. does it just go straight down and it like, to where and it, it like, like. Oh, maybe. Like yeah. that was the bottom bottom level? Yeah. Maybe. Well, well, they're booking it and they, they kind of keep going through the ship. The clowns are following them. Now, there's a deleted scene here. Yeah. Okay. 
where there's only two deleted scenes that I guess you're, Be, that are accessible because the movie is that perfect. Like they didn't yeah. have to cut a whole lot. And no, it's beautiful. Oh, really. It. So this uh, so this deleted scene is it's also uh, attached to the door joke. <laughs> That's like right, right here because so they go, they walk, they run, they, they're running away from the clowns and they're on like this tightrope. Oh yeah. And they walk up this fucking tightrope and open this door that's on the ceiling. Cause wait, hold on. The tightrope at, at the end goes up like stairs. So there, it doesn't make any sense cause magic and, well, and yeah. science and, and space. Uh, they go through this door, which then is like MC Eschered. It's a door that opens up from the floor and they step out and then they're and then this the, way. The camera turns and then they're right side up. Yeah. Oh. Which is really fucking and, cool. And they're surrounded by doors. <laughs> so Mike's like, what are you talking about, Dave? He's like, he's like, there's so many fucking doors. It doesn't matter what door we go through. Yeah, one he, door is just as good as another. He opens it up and there's like four clowns like <laughs> just, listening at the door. <laughs> with like a glass up against it. They're going to say the line. Shh. That's pretty great. And Mike just or Dave just fucking unloads a shotgun on him and they oh slam the door. And then this then this other one like bursts out and like grabs Debbie and then they go through that door. But then it would cut to them running down the hallway Wait. and then Mike goes Another door, and then he opens the door. Another door, oh, yeah, another that. door. I also love uh, how they run down a hallway that's just filled with balloons, and I was like, "Oh, that one's good yeah. too." That that is just an annoyance because they like. I was thinking about that, like in theory, in your head, like oh, I could just run down the hallway. He's like, "No, you're, these balloons are in your way. You got to like literally push through them oh, like that's, fucking soup." That's like a fun time, man. Yeah. All the balloons in the mm, fog in there. Yeah. yeah, that's that's a time. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> okay, there you go. Uh, Don't go in the balloon pit, especially if there's Rudy's, somebody waiting uh, for you there, and his name's Rudy. <laughs> so they end up in this like basically it looks like what you would expect if you went to the circus before. Basically the the main the area, the stage. Ring. Yeah, it's yeah. like the center yeah. ring with the big with the big podium in the middle. And I kind of love this because then you have uh, you know, the Kyotos, they they do a lot of clown designs in this. And there's gotta be like 30 of these motherfuckers walk out with like clubs and bats. Oh man, shout out to Stan Laurel Clown. There is one that looks like fucking <laughs> yeah. Stan, Stan Laurel. Uh, you know what? I didn't want to say anything earlier, but I think they stole the designs from the clowns from Ernest Scared Stupid. <laughs> yeah, those dirty, those dirty dogs. <laughs> We've only, uh, we already covered that movie, Rudy, and talked about this, so you can't, you can't fool me, Mister. And if you don't know what we're talking about, the Kyotos, of course, reused some of the clown designs with uh, minor resculpts yes. for the Ernest Scared Stupid movie, which is excellent. Go check out that episode with Pissy Miles that we yes. did. I don't yes. know why I love messing with you so much, but your you're, facial you're reactions allowed. are amazing. <laughs> That was our hundredth episode. Yes. Oh my god. By and, the way, and, and the train keeps going. The, the ice cream truck keeps going. Oh yeah. The Terenzi brother uh, train keeps going. Yeah, they'll be back in a second because uh, all these clowns converge on them, and they kind of just <laughs> climb to higher grounds. They climb up on the podium. Yeah. It, that's so awesome. Just uh, all of them coming out from behind the woodwork. Yeah, it's and, really cool. Uh, with the weird, ridiculous weapons. I mean, yeah. some of them are just like bats with spikes. Yeah. But one looks like a like a giant. You know the the claw thing that old people use to put their socks on? <laughs> one looks like it's got a big one of that. Like, what is that them. for? Like, if you absolutely possibly need to get somebody 20 feet away. I love how they've transcended making these people food. And they're like, no, we're just going to beat you to fucking oh, get yeah, out yeah. because you caused so much trouble. Yeah. So then speaking of the Terenzis. They so, I, I, there's, so they they finish up with Daisy and Rosebud. They run, got kisses all over their run faces. Run back oh, outside. Those, those pipes are clean, dude. Get their get their van, and then how do they get into this spot? Did they drive through the the wall of every? <laughs> they may have. And aren't they on a different level? <laughs> like, how do you? What I. You're overthinking this, Rudy. No, I so, need to. And you're talking to people that love to overthink things. So, so Royal Dano can't punch a hole through the the thing, but the Terenzis can drive an ice cream truck through the side of it. I mean, that's Me? basically Sweet Tooth fucking truck. I'll say it again yeah, pr from Twisted much, Metal. Yeah, so it's kind of it's like semi invincible. It's a rental. It is a rental. <laughs> they rented it from Sweet Tooth. They even changed the top. He's gonna be pissed when he gets this thing back. Well, unfortunately, he's not going to get it back because no. as they come in to save the fucking day. So, so the Trinity brothers <laughs> blow through the fucking side of this spaceship. And to save uh, Mike, Dave, and Debbie, they like get on the horn because they have this giant clown head on top of the, yeah. the ice cream truck. Jojo. It's Jojo, the, the ice, the, you know, the, the Jojo the clown. The and magnificent. We, yeah, we, yeah, we want you to release them or else. So, uh, they let him. They get him to let him go. But I guess they understand English. I love that they're all looking at it like they're listening, but they're like 
this is weird. Like, that's not one that's of That's not us. him, that's is it? That's not, why aren't his lips moving? The faces, What's the, like, the faces on these clowns are hilarious because the one's like, oh. <laughs> and the other, and what, the fucking shorty's wiggling his ears yeah. and smiling and shit. So it works for like a second. Yeah. <laughs> a couple seconds, just, just enough for them to get down and get towards the Terenzi brothers' truck. And then you see this fucking light up where, uh, like, basically, you would picture like trapeze artists usually coming out of at a, at a circus. Yeah. And the, all the, the flying will, Graysons are yeah. up there. Oh, exactly. Yeah. They're, they're about to get shot down by fucking <laughs> Two Face. But they all look up like the claws, is what I thought of. And they, <laughs> the they, Clownzilla. They, uh, well, oh, exactly. Because they disperse because they know what's about to happen. Yeah. And Big, Big Daddy comes down, the oh, leader. Yeah. This massive fucking like 50 foot tall, 20 foot. I don't even, I'm bad at math. A big ass clown it's comes like, down. It, it's like 22 feet yeah. tall. It's, it's huge. It's, 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 it's like 20 feet. Yeah. It's called Clownzilla. Like, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, what yeah, it's yeah. called. Yeah. And but apparently it's like the commanders. Yeah. The, oh, and the, the other ones are the agents of it. Okay. Or, okay. Um, and which, that, that one obviously reports a Pennywise back home. Yeah, yeah. We're going to find out more when they release Killer Clowns 2 so. with all of them. <laughs> or don't the miniseries. Do yeah. it. <laughs> What the, I love the novelization of it. Hey, the clowns Smith. actually use popcorn to fuck. <laughs> Explain the big giant one. Uh, that's what I thought. Then it's like, yeah. okay, is, <laughs> is it like aliens? You know, like yeah, that's like the queen, the queen, the yeah. queen uh, king, the king queen. Uh, yeah. Well, get um, away from so, us, clownzilla! Get away from her, you clown! So I had I had made a comment earlier that maybe they're like like trolls and goblins, or like where they're asexual and they okay. reproduce through the. Through the the popcorn and all that, like Urukai um, or some shit. Yeah, yeah. which is a, a shame because I'd really like uh, to see the sex scene in Killer Clowns from Outer Space too. With with all of the, I'm sure Rocket clowns. Woods working on it right now, Rude. Mm. You'll get your wish. Mm, yes, thank you. Um, <laughs> so this big ass clown comes down and is like yelling like Godzilla and punches the fucking clown off the top of the ice cream. The truck. best part of this scene. I love that. The best part of the scene is everybody runs away. And they're like, "Come on, Dorenzi brothers!" And they're like, "We can't." It's rented. <laughs> oh, yeah, because there's a big hole in the wall now. Yeah. yeah. Well, they can't leave the truck. D this thing takes a fucking beating. <laughs> he, he throws it yeah. across the room the and it explodes. This. Yeah. The effects with it and the, the scale model to mm. make it. It looks so it's, good. It's just a dude in a suit, but everything is scaled to the, the guy in the suit. So it's, Oh, it, and, I thought they and, scaled a person to the van. You know what you can do? <laughs> you can suck my dick. <laughs> um... Uh, but it's, the miniature work is amazing. It like yeah. it, it's yeah. really incredible. I, um, I forget every time I watch this movie that this scene happens. I'm like, oh yeah, the Terenzi brothers fucking blow up. <laughs> they explode. Oh, yeah. they, there's there no is, time to get into no the freezer. Time to get into that. Uh, yeah, either. it's a comedy horror movie, sure. So anyway. Dave's like, Mike, Debbie, get the fuck out of here. All he's got is this fucking pistol. He doesn't even have the shotgun at this point. No, yeah. but he's firing on this giant clown. And how big this fucking nose? Hey, you know what it is? Like it's the big. the concrete uh, target statues from in front of yeah. Target. Oh, it, yeah. It's on this. How <laughs> so you can you drive not, through the fucking? Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god! That's how perfect. could you not hit that with a? And I mean, I guess maybe under pressure. And if you went to an academy and didn't learn to shoot on the streets like the rest of us, he does <laughs> in a backyard. <laughs> yeah. okay. He completely misses the nose of Clownzilla. Yeah, he is also. I mean, he says this straight up. He's shooting at it as a distraction. But you're right. Why wouldn't he just shoot? The nose I don't yeah know. so it grabs him and picks oh, him up oh this giant hand is amazing and it's great because you get a giant hand grabbing the actual actor then you get clownzilla like picking up a doll that looks pretty good yeah but there's this awesome force perspective piece where you have the clown head and dave is like mm. over here so like here's the here's the camera the clown head and then dave and he fucking takes his badge off and pops its fucking nose it's great and then you get that spinning thing again, yeah. but now it's the giant one. Well, now, yeah. Well, now first it's... the big top starts lifting the fuck off oh, with yeah, Dave right. on it still. It starts yeah. spinning around and shit. And, and it, as it's coming up, like you get to see the bottom of oh, it yeah. where it comes down to a point and it looks like a- uh, like, like a diamond. A, like a giant- uh, Top. Top, A right? spinner. Oh, yeah, like yeah, a, yeah, like yeah. a big top. Yeah. Like, <laughs> and it just dawned on me that- the big top literally looks meant like a big top. that it looks like a big uh, top. Oh my god! As as a as a uh, um, a lover of dad jokes, I laughed my ass off when I said that earlier. And knowing that you just got it now makes it even that much better. Well, no, <laughs> not even that I just got it, but like I never realized that they called it the big top because it looked like a big yeah. top. Yeah. I oh, thought it was so just because, good. like, I don't know, it's. The big top it's, circus. It's, That's a, a, clown it's a big thing. top thing. And I'm well, over here so like, it's a diamond, duh. <laughs> idiots. <laughs> what are you fucking stupid? Uh, come on. 
Uh, but yeah, it starts lifting the fuck. It's a giant dreidel, okay? Uh, oh, there yeah. you go. I didn't know they were Jewish. Yeah. Hey, hey, clowns. <laughs> Starts... I want to see that movie too. <laughs> Killer make Jewish that clowns in outer <laughs> space. <laughs> this fucking thing lifts off with Dave in Killer there. Killer Jewish clowns. <laughs> oh my god! And the fucking state police finally show up. They're ready. They see this thing. They're freaking the fuck out. Yeah. And uh, after he hits it in the nose, a few seconds go by. This thing fucking blows up like a, and it turns into fireworks. Dude, it's the Death Star. And then, of course, it's like, yeah, there's fireworks and glitter and shit. Because they're clowns. Yeah. That's how that works. Because they're clowns. That's why. (laughs) And I'm going to say this now Steven Spielberg, George Lucas, fuck you for ripping off this movie (laughs) because. This fucking clown car comes flying like the nuke in Indiana Jones 4 <laughs> and fucking so Dave like good. shambles out like, oh, I can't, oh, I can't believe I'm alive. This, it goes <laughs> and it fucking falls on the ground. Uh, and then I, you have the fucking, if that's not enough of a payoff, somebody take it from Dave, me. Dave's still alive and the fucking Terenzi brothers pop out of the top with fucking ice cream with popsicles. Uh, and they're, like, they're, they're, they're covered like, in like the melted ice cream. And, literally a refrigerator. And and the they're covered one, in clown cum, ice, the ice one cream, shirt glitter, is open, yeah. and you can see that his chest hair is matted, matted with, with that. Shit. And I'm just thinking, like, oh Ugh. god, that's he doesn't smell too good. No, um, it, it's just funny as hell. It's and funny, they have like yeah. they have like a back and forth, and he's like, hey, anybody want a dipsicle? <laughs> he's like, how'd you survive? We oh, we hit in the freezer in just, just like seconds. Indiana Jones. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that uh. That's saying that that female sexual reproductive organs smell like fish. I was gonna say, wow, I wonder, I wonder what the what the Terenzi brothers smell like. Clownfish, cotton candy, <laughs> clownfish, clownfish. <laughs> Jesus, they man. smell like Nemo. Yeah, oh, God. I found them. That's the that's that's what the female clowns call the clitoris. Nemo, <laughs> find oh, it. Oh my God, God, that's perfect. Oh uh, my God. So then, this thing I was kind of alluding to earlier happens. Our final shot, which. I kind of love, but I'm going to just make fun of it a little. Where Funnel they're... cake. It smells like funnel cake. <laughs> Go ahead. That's delicious. Mm, I'd eat that all day. <laughs> uh, nice powder all over your mouth. Just <laughs> like that. that? Uh, not not powder. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's yeah. Pre-popcorn. Yeah. So, oh my God. so, yeah, they're looking up. Mike, Dave, and Debbie are looking up the sky, watching these firework explosions go off, and you get this final joke where these fucking pies fall from the sky and just cover them. And I'm right like, in the face. Right I kind of love it, but why aren't they turning the acid? Whatever. Yeah. They get it right in the mouth. Yeah. Um, and then, do, 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 oh, yeah. Up. Kick up that fucking Dickies yeah. theme again. And man. wait, I, I love, uh, we watched the, 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 the bloopers. bloopers of it, and they, they do that scene, which they, I guess they got on the first take um because you get super messy when you're sure. covering all that uh, all that pie goop <laughs> and right after they, they 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 get the shot dave goes that hurt like shit because <laughs> there's some guy on a camera like a foot away from them throwing a bunch oh of pies right at their face it was so weird now i watched the old dvd of this so all the special features from the old dvd carried over to the the new uh arrow blue. okay but okay. there's some new interviews but it's funny because if seeing it all on VHS, like behind the scenes and yeah. stuff, is just fucking bizarre to see it I, like that. I love it. And all of the all scenes of that. that you remember from the film, it's just weird to see it like that. Well, you know what? It's also something about seeing like the unfinished product. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Sure. And then knowing like, oh, wow, that would have fit in here. Like there is there is clearly a difference in the quality from the deleted scenes. Oh, yeah. And then when it goes into the other one. And I know you guys have talked about it before. Uh, Full Moon used to do a thing at the end. Video of Zone. Yeah, Video yeah. Zone. And it was all the behind the scenes mm-hmm. stuff. And uh, as a kid growing up and watching that, I loved watching mm-hmm. that It was stuff. the best part of the tape. Yeah. At the end. And you waited till the credits went up. You know, it was like, yeah, it was like your end credit scene that you'd wait for yeah. now. <laughs> and, and I loved seeing that stuff, yeah. man. Seeing so cool. the behind the scenes of how the puppets moved or yeah. the CGI or the, I like. Big time. Uh, there's something about the way that they do it now where it still seems like a finished product because they're adding on, oh, and you get these extra special features and that yeah. adds to the value of the DVD. And the, and it's like, okay, but you're you're producing this to sell it to me. Overproduce. It's, yeah, it's not it's just not, somebody walking around with a camera yeah. being like, oh, fuck oh, it. Yeah, like right. on, yeah, because yeah. the, sh- the shot we see of the blooper of them with the, the pies is not wh- who who's being filmed. Like no. we see the shot... That you don't behind see the, the shot, ladder. the dude, the dude on the see. fucking ladder yeah. throwing pies. But what's so cool is that's the fucking take that they used in the movie. So yeah. seeing it from that perspective, that closing scene from that perspective yeah. is pretty incredible. And, and you know, Walter Peck was off on the side, <laughs> like, "Thank God it wasn't me." <laughs> and then you just hear off in the distance, "Wait, what is that? What is that?" <laughs> oh no! Boom! 
boom, just gets hit with that cum nar <laughs> juice. And then the Quincy <laughs> brothers are like, the hell happened to that guy? <laughs> Have some pie. Uh-huh. Have some pie, Walter. <laughs> and then, uh, you know, after Walter Peck gets annihilated again, we uh, hit those end credits. The Dickies fucking wrap it up and yeah. we hit the credits. Yeah. So, yeah, where are we putting this? Top shelf. Absolutely top shelf. Big time. Uh, one of Big my, top. One of my favorite things, I, I don't know if I said it before, I just love saying it, showing this to my friends that have never seen it before is one of my favorite experiences because I could watch this all of the time. This never gets old for me. And seeing people experience it for the first time fills me with so much joy because now I get to share that with more people. I got two really good ones from that. I got Sean. Okay. Yeah, which I totally forgot. That was his first time that he saw it. And then the first time that my wife saw this, somehow we haven't watched it until we saw it at the Mahoning in 35. Really? Wow. So that was the first time she saw it and she loved it. That's so, awesome. It, that's Yeah, that's a top shelf. <laughs> I, that's, I, 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 yeah, that story was way better than mine. No, Because in my story, the fucker didn't even stay to see the clowns. No. He left. He still hasn't seen it. You yeah. Fuck. Well, that's, on the way home, they actually got into an accident. And <laughs> The clown ran him off oh the yeah. road. Oh, my God. <laughs> Buggy the Clown came out of the fucking That's, that's why I haven't talked to him yeah, since. Probably, yeah. Uh, I mean, this is on the shelf. I mean, well, what can I really say? I mean, that hasn't already been said. I mean, the effects are amazing. Uh, the storytelling, like, it, it is pitch perfect, I would argue, for this film. And the characters are very, like, the ones that are likable are very likable. And the ones that are not likable are very unlikable. And it just, like, gels really well. Like, I hate Mooney. But, like, that is a character. Yeah, a char- he's great, though. That, like, love to hate him. Me and Joe have worked on, like, some side projects, working on scripts, and he's a character I feel like we both always go back to when yeah. you want a shitty sheriff. Yeah, or, yeah. or just, like, or any type of character like that. Yeah, yeah, and it's just, like, uh, the Kyoto, I almost said the Kyoto brothers, but uh, the Terenzi brothers crack me up, and, oh, yeah. you know, speaking of the Kyotos, they really just knocked this one out of the park. Yeah. And, uh... I would love to see whatever the hell that miniseries is because I feel like I've been hearing about it for like two decades. Oh, it's great. They go into all the lore in the past. <laughs> Shut the <laughs> fuck up. Rudy, Rudy and- went to a goddamn time machine and came back and told <laughs> Land us. Land of the Lost. Yeah. Uh, I, I want to be, uh, I hate to go, I want to be a little bit more specific on where on the top shelf I put this. Sure. I put this right next to Pluto Nash. I that mean, is that is disgusting. Yeah. You are never coming on this show again, you fucking blasphemer. <laughs> thank, thank, thanks for stealing my thunder for that joke. <laughs> Um, I mean, the clown designs are amazing. Even if I can't remember any of the damn names, uh, I love Shorty. He's probably my favorite, especially when he knocks that guy's fucking head off. Yes. That kills me every time. And, you know, for years I've been trying to get my wife to watch this. and just She had seen it before, but oh. I always want to revisit it. And yeah. she's like, ah, I don't like that movie. Oh, I got it on and today. And you married Well, her? I have it on today. <laughs> she's sitting there fucking cracking up. I was like, I think she didn't so- like this movie. She's like, oh, it's pretty funny. It's great. I've been trying to watch this for 10 fucking years. You wouldn't let me watch it. So... Anyway, it's a great flick, and, and and I think Rudy said it earlier, if you don't like this movie, you either just aren't into the genre at all, and then why are you watching the show? But you put it, if you haven't watched it in a while, we'll throw this in after the review, like, like rewatch it, you're due. Yeah. It, this is, com- it's top tier, top shelf. Yes. This is one of those fucking desert island movies, right? This is like one of those top 10 yep. kind of all around great, B flicks that I could not live without. And we somehow waited five seasons to cover it. <laughs> well, because a lot of people have covered <laughs> no, it. And yeah, it's, a, yeah. it's a more well-known flick. So we like to we we mostly like to do stuff that people aren't talking about or or need a little bit more love. And Killer Clowns gets a ton of love. And I was so excited. I didn't realize how excited I was going to be to do this. Same. Every I, I've, I've been so busy and not really thinking about it. But then when we were when Rudy and I were sitting down to watch it, I'm like, I fucking love this movie so much and like not how not that i forgot that i loved it but yeah. like it like lit a fire in me that i forget that i always forget about until i watch it and then i'm like this is so fucking good from the special the kyoto's just killed it in every aspect of this from from the special effects to the writing to the directing all the comedy mm. works amazing with all of the horror elements I, there is not too many movies that i can say that where you can have such oddball shit happen. It's called Killer Clowns from Outer Space. Yeah. If for all intents and purposes, it should be a piece of shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> but it's, if this but movie it's the was made if this movie was made today by somebody else, it would be oh, a piece of yeah. shit. Right? It would yeah. that would be terrible. 
everything like the, the weird ideas and and again the special effects and the, the way the clowns look and operate and the and, fact that they were practical really if we oh, made now yeah they'd be CGI, no they'd be all cgi or they wouldn't look anything like no. this they're 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 you wouldn't get a, those rubber suits no but there is a trademark look to these things mm. that you see them and you're like that's the kyoto brothers yes yeah you know um and it's high quality, the highest quality, I would say. But from from the force perspective stuff, all the camera tricks they do and the in the and the stop motion animation and the miniatures, yeah, this... everything is just top tier uh, th- running throughout this. And again, it's a low budget movie. Uh, it's it's the it's the one of dare I say the best B movie that's ever been made. I would agree. In my opinion. And the fact that it holds up as well as it does after 30 years. Gangbusters. Yeah. You can, like you said, you could throw this on any time and have a good time every time. So th- there's something that I, I want to say that I haven't, I didn't mention earlier um, that really made me enjoy watching. And I think this goes back to, to enjoying it with the people that, that you're, you're friends with and that like the movie. I had so much fun watching it with you yeah. today. <laughs> like again. So, and I, you were doing something that brought me back to how I was with the the first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle movie. Because uh, I was a kid when that came out. Yep. And I, I watched it so many times. I sang the song in the beginning for the Pizza Hut. And I knew every word. That I didn't even have to watch the movie. I could just say, I could relive the entire script. And as we're watching it, you're saying the words. And I'm like... That is somebody that loves this movie. I do. And I, it, there's something about watching a movie with somebody that's that, that loves that movie that much that it radiates energy and, and you really enjoy the experience. It, it wasn't some people go, oh, I hate when people talk on the movies. It's different if it's a movie that you enjoy and you can, ah, yeah. this is awesome. And that's, and yeah. I love this. And, and it's not taking away from it because we already know what happens, but we're, you're enjoying it on a on a completely different level than if you were watching it by yourself or right. whatever. Again, the same reason I like showing it to people. Yeah, it's almost mm. like a spiritual experience. Yeah. yeah. Uh, uh, and and again, like I said earlier, like this is one of the big ones for yeah. me growing up as a kid, and um, you know, kind of getting me like this was mixed in again with like like the full moon stuff and the John Carl Beekler stuff. Like this was right there next to all that stuff, and like the Kyotos are my heroes mm. right like they're they're right next to to beekler and rob Bottin and all yeah that. and but but specifically the kyotos and beekler because i feel like they are the underdogs kind of mm. not that they're not respected or or renowned but i feel like they're not the they're not the names that come up when you have conversations yeah. with some people not a lot of people but anyway it's an amazing movie i i i don't know what else to say like 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 it's just it's perfect that it, it really is like i have nothing bad to say about this and i i even like even picking it apart like like we just picked it apart yeah yeah there was nothing about it where i was like that's stupid yeah, or yeah. like like i could have done without this you know what i mean i mean i'm it, throwing out literal nitpicks just 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 to think of anything and even, i don't even really care about the things i joked about not liking and but it, even if you split the hair Oh yeah, you're splitting. You're splitting the hair you're after split, it's already you're been splitting split. Adams at that point. <laughs> and we had even talked about there were only two deleted scenes, yeah. and we kind of wanted them in there. Yeah, like even I thought it would. I thought it actually would have made it like, uh, like expanding on the Debbie character. Yeah. yeah, and even that one at the end when they're in the ship. Like I feel like that was fine. Oh yeah, and if, I don't really know why it was cut. Maybe maybe for pacing. pacing yeah. yeah, or or. There is, there is a gag there, so I, maybe that broke the tension of them running away from. Them, so. Yeah, maybe. Yeah. If you haven't seen the tightrope, uh, the tightrope scene is what it's called in the deleted yeah. scene. Definitely go check it out. Um, because I had made a mention, it, it was the same kind of effect of Pee Wee Herman walking the tightrope yeah. in his movie. Well, they also uh, yeah, Pee Wee's Big Top. Yeah, yeah that's or what, Big that's Top Pee Wee. Yeah. Oh yeah, but oh, then, I don't know if they did Big Top Pee Wee. I'm sorry, they oh, okay. did. They did Pee Wee's Big Adventure though. Um, they the just. The image and going like, oh wait a minute, that's cool. I would have liked to see that in there. Sure, e- but like you said, with the pacing or mm-hmm. even setting it up for the joke, or I, I had already liked the another door line, another yeah. door. But that knowing was- that it came from something else and that you still enjoy it, how how bad can a movie be if you want to see everything that oh, was put yeah. in? You oh know yeah, what I mean? big like, time. And and again, I uh, can't stress enough. If you don't own this movie already, go just go for the Gusta. Grab that uh, Arrow Blu-ray mm. that's sitting right over there. It's got all of the special features from the original MGM DVD that they put out. 
Um, and then it has a bunch of new interviews with like the Dickies and Grant yeah. Kramer and uh, Suzanne Snyder and the Kyotos and stuff. There's full length commentary tracks on it. It's got the lead scenes, bloopers. They have clown auditions and the fucking suits and stuff. It's it's a yeah, it's a jam packed disc. The it's gorgeous because Arrow puts out an amazing product and there's like a poster and some other shit in there. It's re- it's a really nice disc. I'm so. definitely gonna be picking this. And there's nipples. There's nipples. And you can see, you can you can only see them nipples. Yeah. Um. Or if you if you don't want to buy the Blu-ray, you can do uh you can do what I'm gonna do and steal a copy from your friend. That copy specifically. Yeah. That 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 one. You better be watch your shit, man, because I'm gonna fucking pull out my puppet uh, cotton candy gun and fucking zap your ass mm. and put you in the corner. Yeah, boss. I'd... I'll save you for later. I'll stick you with a fucking crazy straw. <laughs> You're gonna wish you brought that fucking popcorn gun, Rudy. <laughs> You're gonna need oh, it. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> so yeah, Rude. Uh, where can everybody find you? What do you you know? What's coming up? Uh, so what do you got cooking? Uh, the summer, I will be all up and down the South Jersey coast from Brigantine, Ocean City, uh, Margate, Ventnor, Cape May, Wildwood, hopefully too, fingers crossed, uh, for the entertainment stuff. Uh, you can find us at Lucky Duck Entertainment on Facebook and Instagram. For the coffee stuff, we'll be at live events and online, which is loveislovecoffee.com. Uh, and matter of fact, for you guys, I'm going to put a special on there. It's normally $15.99 plus shipping for each bag. But if you put dumpster as the promo code, we'll give it to you $15 even. Look at that. Uh, there you go. Because because I love these guys. I love this show. Tell your friends about this. Uh, keep keep shows like this going. Uh, I and actually, support the community. At least 10% of the profits from each bag go to charities in the LGBT community. The biggest one that we're working on is the Trevor Project, uh, which we are hopefully in the future working on some big team ups with that, too. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, and we also have merch for Lucky Duck Entertainment, uh, which I would like to to share with you guys. Yeah, OK. Uh, we have some pins and stickers, and I'll even include that in the giveaway of the bag of coffee for your listeners. Awesome. Because there it's, you go. it's all about spreading the love and, and spreading the entertainment stuff. For sure. All right. I'll grab it now. She give away the balloon dog. But you got all the and balloon they, dog. They get it. It's just a pop piece of latex. Oh God. They can have this the was, ones I couldn't actually. Yeah, it blow. was screen used. This is, has this has uh, Sean's saliva. Yeah, on yeah, it. yeah. yeah. Uh, so My spit juice. We have the Love Is Love coffee that comes with a Love Is Love sticker. Uh, that is going to be awesome. For that is for your listeners. Uh, you guys already have yours. Oh yeah. And then for it's really good coffee too. By the way, for you guys and for your listeners. Uh, I am a big fan of the old Universal movie Monsters as well. For sure. So I have been doing, as part of Lucky Duck Entertainment, uh, crossovers of ducks and the the, the Universal, Universal movie Monsters. Monsters. That's awesome. So oh. we have the Invisible Duck. <laughs> I love the Invisible Duck. That's uh, awesome. We have Dr. Quackenstein's Creature. Uh, <laughs> I refuse to call him a monster because he is he's an innocent little being and I love him. Uh, <laughs> and we also have, of course, uh, Dr. Quackenstein, or the bride of Dr. Quackenstein's creature. Uh, so we have these as stickers for you guys, actually. And this is for you. Oh, thank you. Oh, we got one Look at for that. you. Oh, man. And for you, these I are, think that's it. These are pretty cool. So, Perfect. And, and your listeners are going to get a set of that as well. Awesome. And we have, because I love collecting pins. Oh, yeah, big uh, time. I have a Lucky Duck Entertainment pin that we are throwing in. You guys get, and you get cool. a pin, and you, and you get, get a pin, pin. and you Look, get a pin. I got it. And we have got a pin. pins of the Invisible Duck and ah. Dr. Quackenstein's Creature as well. I'm working, hopefully, within the next couple of months to have the Bride's pin out as well. Awesome. So that's for your listeners. That is for you, and that is Thank for you. Thank you so much, man. These um, are so cool. <laughs> yeah, I absolutely love them. They they make me very happy, and uh, yeah, I want to I want to do a whole I want to do it with all the monsters and all the all the creatures because I I love horror stuff and I like making things. That's awesome. Definitely, yeah. So check out Rudy. He's got a whole. You just heard all the good stuff coming up. We got this great giveaway prize that we're gonna be uh, we're gonna be uh, giving away on the social. So keep an eye out for that. Yeah. Yep. Listen for the uh, the secret word. Pluto Nash is the best movie ever. That's false. Don't <laughs> listen for that. But what you can do is use Dumpster at checkout if you buy from loveislovecoffee.com. <laughs> I, I think I broke Sean. I, I, Shit. If Joe, if it wasn't Joe's copy, the hammer would be coming out and it'd be fucking pieces. <laughs> um, 
But yeah, if you haven't uh, checked out our Leap and Leprechauns episode, go check that out. And go back and check out that Shakes the Clown episode for sure. That's a good one. And uh, yeah, if you're watching on YouTube, do us a favor. Uh, hit like and subscribe, please. It helps us uh, get the show out to, to more watchers and listeners. And if you're on Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts and you're listening to this, the audio version, leave us a five-star review. Uh, and uh, yeah. Please, that would be great. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. really appreciate it. Like we always say, uh, again, I, I still have not figured out the new version of this saying, but you know, out of the bottom of the dumpster and into your eardrums or eyeballs or whatever, flo- up your oh, ass, I don't know. I don't know about up your ass, but definitely in your eyes and ears for sure. Into your entertainment or Oh, look at that big boogie. <laughs> that just silenced everybody, big boogie. <laughs> Uh, so I think we should I think we should end this by uh, everybody making a balloon dog. So grab a balloon, blow it up, and let's the look mm. of disdain. You want me to fail again on camera, Rudy? <laughs> all right, all right, we'll we'll wait. Oh, just grab the one behind and say you did it. Big round of applause for Sean, who made his first balloon dog. I love it. <laughs> So that's it. That's Killer Clowns from Outer Space from 1988, directed by Stephen Kyoto. I'm Joel Escola. I'm Sean O'Rourke. And I'm Rudy Real. Thanks for visiting the dumpster. 